Welcome to Fanfiction Audiobook. I, the strongest fleet admiral, kill Whitebeard at the beginning. Chapter 41. Don't look at the red-haired man who looks like a warm and cheerful green forest hero. I usually don't show off at all. From the five elders to the little bandits. They can all be treated equally. But in fact, this is a man with an extremely strong ego. Otherwise, Conqueror's domineering power wouldn't be so strong. He doesn't allow anything beyond his expectations to happen. He wants to be the guide who understands everything about the world and the middleman who balances the order of the sea. His face can be ignored by unknown people like bandits who don't know him. But you can't be trampled by the big shot who knows you. How scary. Is this Conqueror's hockey? Enel, who is very close to Sakuski, intuitively felt the red-haired man's powerful aura against Sakuski. Having never come into contact with conquerors, he only felt a strong dizziness in his head. His internal organs seemed to have been violently impacted. Heart palpitating. It makes people want to kneel down and surrender. I didn't expect this red-haired cripple to be so powerful. But the boss didn't cover it. Enel resisted the urge to flee the battlefield. Silently looking at Sakuski beside him. You can't embarrass the boss. Sakuski saw that the red-haired man was still increasing his momentum as if he had lost his mind. A sneer appeared at the corner of his mouth. And then you're welcome. He mercilessly poured out all the energy he had hidden in his body. Suddenly there was a strong wind. The Yarchman mangroves on the island sway in the strong wind. The branches of a mangrove tree next to Sakuski could no longer withstand the extremely majestic pressure. It broke suddenly in an instant. The two strengthened momentums collided together. It was like thunder exploding in the clouds. The ground beneath the redhead's feet began to crumble. Exposed layers of hard rock underground. The calm sea in the distance began to rise and fall. Then the waves surged. Waves several meters high crashed mercilessly on the shore. It gnaws at the rocks on the shore like a wild beast. The red and dark red auras continued to collide in the air. After all, no one can do anything to anyone. The redhead looked solemn. The pupils in his eyes have shrunk to the size of pinheads. He no longer takes chances now. I have to admit that my conqueror's domineering power really cannot suppress Sakuski. Sakuski pretended to be so weak before, and she even doubted whether he was injured. Later, he took advantage of the thunder and lightning attack to escape, which strengthened his guess. Who knew that he would come to heaven to give himself such a surprise? He he. How despicable. The redhead was shocked and angry. Seeing that the rock layer under his feet began to crack. Immediately, the dark red aura was regained. And he pulled out the supreme sharp knife, Griffin. Pointing at Sakuski in the air. Sakuski also retracted the crimson aura that erupted from his body. He slowly adjusted the bloody rose on his chest. After straightening it up, he began to issue orders. Kazaru. Hold back Beckman and Jesus B.U. Enel. Go deal with that fat man with meat in his hand and wearing small sunglasses. As soon as he finished speaking, Sakuski's hands immediately turned into lava. Meteor volcano. Countless amounts of hot magma scattered from the sky. Like fireworks all over the sky. There was an explosion at the location of the red-haired pirates. For the red-haired pirates who don't bother to eat devil fruits. The killing power of this logia fruit is fully demonstrated. In the chaos, no one noticed that one of the masses of magma burned the unconscious Lieutenant General Exiomir and the doglegs around him, leaving no intact corpses. The red-haired man saw that Sakuski had no martial ethics. The younger brother of his pirate group who continued to use large-scale attacks could not help but roar. Akainu. Then he swung the western sword in his hand with his only arm. Suddenly the sword energy was everywhere. Quickly chop up all the magma scattered in the air. Sakuski also slowly fell from the sky at this time. Both feet stepped on the thick earth, raising a puff of dust. His cold eyes stared at the red-haired man holding the knife in front of him, ready to attack. Suddenly, a bolt of lightning suddenly passed over Sakuski and flew straight towards the red hair in front. Boss, capture the thief first and capture the king first. Enel's voice came from the flashing lightning. Countless lightning bolts wrapped around his golden stick. The sound of electricity sizzles. As Enel's figure gradually approached the red hair. The golden rod in his hand continued to thicken and grow. The terrifying current instantly messed up the surrounding magnetic field. 
The wind and waves generated by the magnetic storm were like beasts in heat tearing at the red hair's cloak. Immediately, the thick weapon stabbed the red-haired torso mercilessly. Hong Mao, let's capture him without any effort. Enel thought that his sudden attack would catch the redhead off guard. However, unexpectedly, the golden stick was easily blocked by the red hair with his long sword. Just when Enel looked stunned, the red-haired man's eyes were frozen, and his pupils shrank instantly. A huge force was transmitted from the arm to the sword. Roll. The invisible momentum spreads out like waves. Enel flew out instantly, stumbling along the way until it was blocked by the trunk of a mangrove tree thousands of meters away. Enel sank deeply into the tree trunk and felt stupid. What the hell is this? Lifting his weak arms, Enel broke free from the humanoid groove. After taking a slight breath, he turned into thunder and lightning and appeared next to Sakaski in the blink of an eye. Sakaski looked at the embarrassed Enel speechlessly. You can't capture this king for the time being. Let's deal with that little thief. Sakaski said this and ignored Enel. He looked at the redhead with a mocking face across from him. The atmosphere began to become tense again. In an instant, the two of them rushed towards each other at the same time. Dark Hound. God avoids. Sakaski's right fist turned into lava. A ferocious giant dog made of lava carried its owner's iron will and bit at the red-haired man. The red-haired man swung his sword at high speed with a flying slash filled with domineering energy. The sharp sword energy rises from the ground, unstoppable. The red magma and the dark red sword light collided together. Suddenly, magma splashed everywhere and sword energy raged. Sakaski didn't take it seriously and continued to rush towards the redhead. In a blink of an eye, he came to the red hair. Conqueror's domineering energy wrapped around the hot right fist. There was a trace of electric arc and cold light. He mercilessly smashed the red-haired man in the face. The red hair has not faded at all. He quickly raised the domineering western sword in his hand to block it in front of him. The hard fist collided with the sharp sword. Makes a harsh metallic sound. Feeling the hot western sword in his hand, the red-haired man used one arm hard to knock Sakaski's fist away. Then he flipped his wrist, changed the angle of the long sword, and stabbed forward hard. Sakaski snorted and did not dodge. He actually grabbed the stabbing sword with his left hand that turned into lava. The red hair was shocked and just wanted to pull it out. But he saw that Sakaski had already swung his right fist and hit the red-haired man directly on his bare chest. The red-haired man could only hurriedly protect his upper body with top-grade armed color hockey. Bang! Sakaski's fist hit the redhead's dark chest hard. Before it was over, magma suddenly emerged from his fist, as if it was about to carry out a second round of strikes. The red-haired man who had endured Sakaski's punch felt a severe burning sensation in his chest. His right hand immediately pulled out the long sword held by Sakaski. Then he kicked his feet forward hard, and his body retreated instantly. Wait until you are a few feet away. The redhead glanced down at his slightly burned chest. He raised his head sullenly. Looking at Sakaski with a joking look on his face. A scarlet light flashed in his eyes. The crazier the enemy in front of us, the more it proves the damage of our attack, and the more it proves the necessity of Marine to fight against pirates, Sakaski. The other side. Enel listened to Sakaski and was playing guerrilla warfare with Lucky Lu. Fat man. Take a move from me, Thunderbird. Enel, who was floating in the air and running around, suddenly stopped. He fired several bolts of thunder and lightning at Lucky Lu who was chasing him on the ground. Thunder and lightning turned into ferocious birds of prey. It let out a sharp neigh and rushed straight towards Lachi Lu. Although Lucky Lu is obese. But the speed is not slow at all. After a few breaths, he completely escaped. Boy, your attack is not accurate. Enel watched as his attack failed to work. I couldn't help but feel shocked. But then a trace of ridicule appeared on his face. Really? Look at what's on your right hand. Lucky Lu glanced at his right hand in confusion, and immediately made a pig noise. Ah. My flesh. I saw that the bones and flesh of a string of sticks held by Lucky Lu in his right hand had been burnt. As black as coal. Kid. You pissed me off. Enel let out a loud laugh. You can catch up with me later. Lucky Lu looked at Enel who turned into lightning and disappeared before his eyes. I sighed internally. I don't know when Akainu found such a thunder fruit user. It's so difficult. 
Now Enel can be said to be the only one in this world except Kazaru. The fastest man. After systematic training, Enel has taken a step further in developing the thunder fruit. Then his speed can match Kazaru's. It will only take a few seconds to get from the Sabayati Islands to the Marine Headquarters. It can be called a second man. On his side, Kazaru glanced at the lively Enel. I couldn't help but pursed my lips and sighed. Young people are still energetic. I don't know if Beckman is too strong or if he doesn't want to fight. Kazaru, who is one against two, seemed to have a difficult time fighting. From time to time, his body would be blown apart by a sudden bullet from Jesus. I should say it has to be Kazaru, he is 50 to 50 equal to everyone. The battle continued until the evening of the next day. Kazaru and Enel felt a little tired after playing all day and night. At this time, they all turned their attention to Sakuski and Red Hair in the center of the battlefield. I don't know which round of collision ended. Sakuski paused briefly. Looking at the Red Hair who has not yet calmed down. He put away his black fist with a few white sword marks. And tidied up the messy collar. Looking at the setting sun on the beach, I breathed a long sigh of relief. Think it should be coming soon. That's right, Sakuski told Zephyr and the others about the situation here on the way to the Sabayati Islands. Let them come over as soon as possible to support. This point should be almost there now. Sakuski. I'm here to help you. Zephyr's powerful voice came from the shore. If you really say Sao Sao, Sao Sao will be here. His red hair lay down on his sore right arm. Breathed heavily. He looked at Zephyr, who was stepping on the moonwalk just like Sakuski had done before. I couldn't help but wonder. If this crippled former marine general doesn't serve as his instructor, what is he doing here? The red-haired eyeliner is placed inside marine and world government. It is clear that marine currently lacks high-level combat capabilities. Aokiji quits marine, Sengoku and Garp retire. Only Akainu and Kazaru are left with the general's fighting strength. That's why he dared to invade the Sabayati Islands next to Marinavando. The next second, Zephyr appeared next to Sakuski. Only then did the redhead see Zephyr's arm clearly. Suddenly the pupils shrank. When, Mamasugi and La, who were following Zephyr, also came to the battlefield. Mamasugi immediately drew his knife and went to help Kazaru deal with Beckman and Jesus B.U. As for Luo, he slowly walked to a tree root and sat down. He held the, ghost cry, sword in front of his chest with both hands, as if nothing was wrong. He just came to watch the fun. What was promised to Sakuski has been done. He doesn't need to participate in this battle. Sakuski ignored the shocked redhead opposite and glanced at Zephyr's thick right arm. He nodded happily. Teacher Zephyr, you came just in time. Can you fight me? Zephyr saw the way Sakuski looked at his right arm. I immediately understood what it meant. He raised his left arm. He laughed and scolded. You kid. Who are you looking down on? Don't worry, it's not in your way. Then, let's go together. After finishing speaking, the two of them rushed towards the red-haired man at the same time. Sakuski stepped forward. In the blink of an eye, he appeared in front of the red hair and swung a magma fist heavily. Rolling magma poured on the western sword drawn by the red hair. The sound of humming kept sounding, as if it was going to melt this indestructible sword. The redhead felt the hilt of the knife becoming increasingly hot. He was about to push back Sakuski's fist. However, the next second. Zephyr came to the left front of the red hair. The powerful arm domineering energy wraps around the left fist. Exuding a dazzling black light. Hit the redhead directly on the head. The terrifying punch made the red-haired pupils shrink. The redhead immediately pulled away and backed away. But he was still hit in the shoulder by this punch. How come you still have so much strength? The redhead felt the burning pain coming from his shoulder. I couldn't help but take a breath of cold air. At the same time, I couldn't help but feel fear in my heart. It was already very difficult to deal with Sakuski alone. Now comes another Zephyr who was thought to be crippled and powerless but still has some strength left. Seeing that his attack missed. Zephyr was slightly dissatisfied. So the speed of punching out increased a little faster. However, the red-haired man who was on guard either blocked them with his sword or dodged them. Zephyr was a little angry. After all, my left hand is not my dominant hand. The right hand also needs to rest for a while. Can't use full power now. Fortunately, Zephyr acts the same as Garp. 
He is a top physical expert with non-fruit abilities, and his whole body can be used as a weapon. After the red hair blocked Zephyr's fist with his long sword again. This time Zephyr didn't close his fist and charge up to punch again like before. Instead, he pushed his right foot hard on the ground. Then he raised it up and struck directly at the red-haired ribs with his whip leg. With a harsh plosive sound. The red-haired one-armed man had no extra hands to block this powerful kick. You can only raise your knees to protect the gap. Boom. The domineering calves and knees, both covered in armed colors, violently collided with each other. There were bursts of metallic sounds. Zephyr's eyes lit up when he saw that this trick was effective against the red-haired man with only one arm. Then use both hands and feet. Keep hitting the redhead with fists, kicks and knees. Sakaski was not idle either, constantly waiting for opportunities to give the red-haired a taste of magma punch. The red-haired man whose conqueror's domineering power is useless can only use swordsmanship to deal with magma and physical skills. After a while, the red-haired man's already chaotic breathing became even more uncoordinated. It's not a good place to stay for a long time. Can't fall in love with war. The thought suddenly popped into the red-haired mind. Sakaski didn't care what the redhead was thinking at this time. It's getting dark again. And Zephyr is still cooperating so well. He immediately launched a more violent attack. Big fire breathing. Boom. Dark hound. Boom. Dog bites Gurin. A series of overwhelming attacks made the red-haired man retreat repeatedly, complaining incessantly. Zephyr was stunned to see such a ferocious Sakaski. While taking advantage of the gap between Sakaski's attacks, he kept attacking the red-haired man with his still hard left fist and left and right legs. At the same time, he secretly wondered if Sakaski had secretly taken drugs just now. Sakaski wasn't on drugs. I'm just tired of this battle and want to end it quickly. The physical strength is outputted like crazy as if it costs nothing. Two people versus one person, or a disabled person, this game will be won. Meteor meteorite. Finally, under the hazy moonlight, a dazzling crimson light flashed through. Sakaski took advantage of the red-haired knife to block Zephyr's fist. Encourage all the muscles of the body to concentrate on the right fist. It hit the red and scorched chest as solidly as a hammer. This punch broke Sakaski's iron bones and revealed Marine's majesty that cannot be desecrated. Suddenly, the red-haired man spat out a large amount of blood. He staggered back a few steps, his figure crumbling. Magma penetrated his skin, fascia, muscles and even bones. It made him feel like his insides were melting. Shanks. Captain. Boss. If you hit someone, and that person retaliates against you severely, there is only one reason, and that is that you didn't hit him hard enough. As long as you beat him to death or maim him, the world will be quiet. Sakaski. The crew of the red-haired pirates noticed the extremely weak red-haired man. Suddenly he shouted nervously to his captain. Hear everyone's shouts. The redhead barely managed to steady his shaking body. He wanted to speak but struggled to cough twice. He coughed up blood mixed with pieces of internal organs. Everyone. Retreat quickly. The redhead took a breath and shouted. The order to retreat was given. Then get rid of the attacks of Sakaski and Zephyr. He also ran quickly towards the red foss docked on the shore. Beckman, who was entangled with Kazaru, fired several bullets in succession and then withdrew his flintlock gun. Jesus covered his arm with a new sword wound from Mamasagi. The two of them followed the red hair and fled towards the pirate ship on the shore. As for Lucky Lu, he is still entangled with Enel and cannot escape for the time being. Sakaski looked at the red-haired group of people who started to retreat, a fiery red light flashed in his eyes. His hands immediately turned into hot magma, and then he punched dozens of times in the sky. Meteor volcano. The dark sky was instantly illuminated. Roiling lava fell from the sky. Keep hitting the escaping red-haired pirates. Under Sakaski's deliberate control. A huge ball of magma rushed at an unusually tricky angle behind Lockstar, who was fleeing with Rayleigh's body on his back. When Lockstar noticed something strange behind him, it was already too late to dodge. Boom. There was a deafening bang. Accompanied by a shrill scream. Immediately attracted the attention of the rest of the red-haired pirate crew. Lock. The redhead was the first to react. Lockstar looked like he was no longer human. And Rayleigh's body beside him, which had completely turned into coal, couldn't help but roar loudly. 
The terrifying aura erupted with the red hair's anger. But before it spread out, it dissipated into the void. It seems that a man at the peak of his passion is preparing to show off his power, but in an instant, his passion plummets and becomes sluggish. The redhead was so angry that he coughed up a mouthful of blood again. He looked at his tragically dead brother with red eyes. He couldn't help but pull out Griffin from his waist again. He held it tremblingly in his hand and waved it decisively in Sakuski's direction. A weak light red sword energy slid on the ground. It is completely opposite to the red-haired person's excited and angry emotional state. This sword energy is neither earth-shattering nor shocking. Very ordinary. If the red-haired sword energy before was like a surging river, rushing endlessly, it could hang someone to death if he was not careful. So now his sword energy may still be quite powerful for ordinary people. But for Sakuski, it is like a puddle of sewage flowing in a stinky ditch, both smelly and dishonorable. Sakuski swung his fist casually, defeating the insignificant sword energy in an understatement. At the same time, Sakuski also realized more clearly that the red hair's current situation was in danger. The red-haired man saw that he could only unleash such an unsightly attack. He immediately let out an unwilling growl. Shanks. Let's go. Seeing this scene, Beckman could only suppress the sadness in his heart, and pulled the red hair and continued running towards the shore. I want to leave. How can it be that easy? Sakuski continued the pursuit. Zepha went to clean up the other red-haired pirate crew members who did not escape in time. When Kazaru saw his opponent running away, he took his time and had no intention of pursuing him. Instead, he walked around in place like a veteran cadre. Sometimes he would kick the escaping pirates to the ground with his feet. As for Mamasugi, he followed Zepha to hunt down those pirates who had some strength. Being a henchman on the red-haired pirate ship is no ordinary henchman. Wait for Sakuski to chase him all the way to the shore. Seeing that Red Hair and Beckman's group were about to board the Red Foss. Dark Hound. Sakuski immediately punched the pirate ship hard. The extremely high temperature magma is extremely powerful. The pirate ship will be completely destroyed in the next second, leaving the Red Hair with no choice but to leave. Suddenly, a figure appeared between the rolling lava and the pirate ship. Boom. Magma's offensive was actually blocked. But the figure fell straight down. Never stood up again. Jesus cloth. The red-haired man who had already boarded the ship had eyes wide open. He was about to jump off the boat and fight to the death with Sakuski, but was stopped by Beckman. Immediately ordered the navigator at the helm to set off immediately. Immediately, the pirate ship disappeared at an extremely fast speed into the thick night. Sakuski walked slowly to the shore. He glanced at the missing pirate ship. He gave up the plan of going to sea to continue the pursuit. Then he lowered his head and looked at the lifeless Jesus B.U. Although Jesus cloth covered his whole body with armed color domineering at the critical moment. But even though he was already injured, he still couldn't withstand the power of the most powerful magma, so he had no choice but to drink in anger on the spot. For this man who abandoned his seriously ill wife and young son. A man who shouts the slogan, the pirate flag is calling me, and at the invitation of the red hair, goes to sea to become a pirate without hesitation. Sakuski looked down upon him from the bottom of his heart. He claims to be brothers to a group of pirates, which seems so affectionate, but he doesn't care about family ties at all. No matter how romantic and passionate the declaration is, he is just a selfish pirate after all. I wonder what it means to be willing to die for pirates now. This world is so weird, so things like pirates shouldn't exist. In front of Jesus laying the corpse, Sakuski slowly took out a box of cigars from his pocket and took one out. Then he squatted on the ground. The cigar was lit by the still extinguished flames on the corpse. Then he narrowed his eyes and took a deep breath, and then gently exhaled a breath of white smoke. It felt like I was exhaling all the fatigue of the day out of my body. Looking at the twinkling stars in the dark night sky above, Sakuski was lost in thought for a moment. This is a vast starry sky. After all, stars light years away cannot illuminate this dark night, they are too far away. Only the sun that is close to this earth can bring light to the world forever. Maybe I am just a distant star now. It can only emit a negligible light to illuminate the path forward for some people. What he is doing now may always be just an inconspicuous spot of light in the darkness. 
Perhaps only when countless light points come together to form a huge fireball can the dark night be completely illuminated. Only when justice is at its peak, happiness will envelope the whole world. After a while, the cigar burned to ashes. Sakaski also slowly came to his senses. The remains of the cigar were casually left on Jesus Boo's body. He rearranged the crooked rose on his chest. Then he walked slowly towards the depths of the island. The dew drops from the red osmanthus make it feel cold, and I lean against the strong wind at night without harvesting it. Since you can't be the sun to burn the sins of the world now, then first be the brightest star in the night sky. When Sakaski returned to the center of the island, he saw a strange scene. Kazaru, Zefa, Mamasagi, Luo and others were all sitting on the roots of the tree, looking like they were watching a show. Only Enel and the fat little Lucky Lu continued to fight. Sakaski walked to Zefa with doubts. Teacher Zefa, what are you doing? Zefa stared at Enel who kept flashing in the sky. Ha ha ha. Sakaski, where did you bring this kid back from? We want to see where his limits are. It seems that Zefa is very satisfied with Enel. A user with the thunder fruit ability who is as fast as me, it's so scary. Kazaru interjected casually from the side. Mamasugi smiled. Holding Jinbaluo in his arms, he looked at Enel on the battlefield with interest. I am really happy that Marine has added another Logia fruit user. As for Luo, he yawned expressionlessly. It seemed like everything had nothing to do with him. Pelusolino, I've told you before that it's not okay to rely too much on fruit abilities like you. Look at how hard it is for you to fight against Ben Beckman, the deputy captain, this time. Can you learn from someone else Sakaski? Zefa glanced at Kazaru who was careless, and suddenly became angry. When Zefa was in the training camp, he was dissatisfied with Kazaru's behavior of not listening to the teachings and relying too much on the shining fruit. He believes that physical skills and domineering are the foundation. Fruit abilities are only auxiliary. Only by laying a solid foundation for the body can we better unleash the potential of our fruit abilities. And Sakaski is now the Grand Master of everything. Powerful Marine Six Styles, Top 3 Color Hockey, Awakened Rock Berry Ability and Skilled Swordsmanship. This is the capital that Sakaski can stand out from the crowd. Zefa could not be more satisfied with Sakaski. Strong strength, clear mind and firm belief. Marine should have been handed over to him sooner. If Sakaski knew what Zefa was thinking, he would definitely agree with it. Fleet Admiral Sakaski, Marine Justice is like the Eternal Night. Boom. A loud noise in the battlefield attracted everyone's attention again. I saw Enel floating in the air and Lucky Lu found a flaw. Then Lucky Lu raised his fat fist and hit Enel hard in the stomach. In an instant, Enel sank into the ground and the soil flew up. Okay. Stop watching the excitement and deal with him quickly. Sakaski knew that Enel would not be able to figure it out for a while. So he called on the people around him and walked forward together. Lucky Lu, who had just knocked Enel out of the air, didn't have time to be proud. I felt several powerful auras approaching. He looked around with his small eyes widened under his sunglasses, and his heart suddenly tightened. Sakaski, Kazaru, Zefa and Mamasugi slowly approached Lucky Road from four directions. Although Lucky Lu had already been determined to die after Red Hair's defeat. But facing the attack from these four players, I was still trembling inside. Lucky Lu closed his eyes for a moment, then opened them again, his eyes full of death. Five seconds later, a fat body collapsed violently under the envelopment of lava, lasers, fists and sword energy, and passed away. This is a treatment that even redheads didn't enjoy just now. Boss. You are finally willing to take action. Enel got up from the pit and muttered to Sakaski with a look of resentment. At this time, Enel's nose and mouth Kakuzu had residual blood. His bare upper body was covered in bruises. There were also several big holes in his pants. Very embarrassed. When Zephyr saw such an image of Enel, he couldn't help but click his tongue and shake his head. Boss. Sakaski, why is this guy acting like a gangster? Enel was immediately dissatisfied when he heard this little purple-haired old man talking about him. Hey, old man, who are you talking about? Enel wanted to continue talking, but suddenly felt an aura locking onto him. The next second, before he had time to elementalize. Zephyr's fist had already hit him hard on the head. Old man. Boy, you are so arrogant. 
Enel felt like stars were shining in his eyes. At the same time, he was startled and looked at the old man in front of him again with fearful eyes. Enel, be polite, he is the teacher Zephyr I told you. Sakaski saw that the future teacher and student had a bad eye from the beginning, so he quickly came out to explain. Teacher Zephyr, he is Enel. He has just joined Marine and has not received any systematic training. He will be handed over to you in the next few months. Zephyr heard that Enel had not received systematic training. Suddenly his eyes lit up, staring directly at Enel as if he had discovered some stunning beauty. The fiery eyes made Enel feel slightly uncomfortable. He was used to being topless and couldn't help but want to find something to wear. You are the boss's teacher. Then you are very powerful. How do you plan to train me? Zephyr burst into laughter upon hearing this. You'll know later. The first thing you should do now is put me in a marine uniform. Zephyr accepted the student with obvious joy. The neglected Luo looked at Marine who was enjoying himself. He boldly stepped forward and cautiously asked Sakaski. Head of Fleet Admiral, my mission has been completed, so what you promised before should be. Luo Yifan's words were very polite, even a little humble. There was no way, Luo Bu couldn't help but bow his head to reality. Didn't you see that the four emperors were all beaten by these marines? Sakaski seemed to have noticed Luo just now. Turning his head to look at Luo, who had a cautious face, the corner of his mouth raised a slight arc and disappeared immediately. Finally you can't hold it any longer, right? You did a good job. The marine warship will arrive later. Let's go back to the marine headquarters together and settle the matter tomorrow morning. Don't worry, marine keeps its promise. Sakaski cycle induction. Luo nodded doubtfully. No matter what, he has to work hard to get the position of Shichibukai. This will make you eligible to form an alliance with stronger pirates. This gives him a chance to defeat that man. Enel, you go take care of your personal matters first. You won't have so much time when you get back to Marine Headquarters. Sakaski suddenly said to Enel, who was discussing something with Zephyr. And gave him a subtle look. Enel understood in an instant, and after saying goodbye to Zephyr, he immediately turned into thunder and lightning and disappeared in midair. After a long time, Doberman's warship finally arrived. In this way, the group returned to Malinfando. Everyone goes back to their homes. Sakaski placed Luo in a guest room and walked quickly toward home. When he walked to the door of his house, he found that the lights inside were already on. Looks like they're back. The corners of Sakaski's mouth curled up slightly. Sakaski opened the door and saw that everyone was there. Enel lay on his back on the sofa and ate an apple. His eyes wandered left and right, looking at the layout of the house. Skylark is preparing dinner. As for Von Clay he should stay in his basement. Uncle Sakaski. Are you okay? As soon as Skylark saw Sakaski coming back. Immediately put down the kitchen utensils. He ran forward nervously and asked. His eyes kept looking at Sakaski. Don't worry, that red-haired guy is no match for the boss. Enel casually threw the apple core into the trash can in the corner. Then he looked at Sakaski with a hint of reverence. Pervert, shut up. Skylark immediately yelled at Enel. After learning that Enel was a subordinate recruited by Uncle Sakaski himself. Skylark will not be polite to him, so what about the thunder fruit? He is still obediently surrendering to Uncle Sakaski. Hey! Hey, who's perverted, you violent girl? Enel immediately retorted not to be outdone. Sakaski nodded towards the two enemies. Then he met Skylark's worried gaze, paused, and said, it's nothing serious. It's a pity that the red-haired man ran away. Enel looked regretful. The corners of Sakaski's mouth raised slightly. What? You were instantly killed by someone else. Even if you don't run away, what can you do? Enel's face suddenly stiffened and he scratched his head in embarrassment. Wait until I train for a few months and master the armed hockey, and then I'll settle the score with him. Sakaski was noncommittal. Enel's talent is very high. After Zephyr's careful training, I believe that his combat power will soon approach that of the general. But it still takes some time to deal with red hair alone. The veteran four emperors are not just ordinary people, and they are not easy to deal with. From now on, train well with Zephyr, and then this will be your home for the time being. If anything happens, you can go to the Fleet Admiral office to see me or Skylark. By the way, where is your arc motto? 
Sakaski suddenly thought of the spaceship. It was a good thing and couldn't be lost. Enel was stunned when he heard the word, home, in Sakaski's words. Home, is a strange word to him. He used to keep to himself. Without friends or relatives, there is naturally no so-called home. Is the, home, that I once envied and envied finally available today? Does my Enel have a family too? Enel looked at the tall and serious man in front of him and couldn't help but trembled in his heart. Um, Sakaski saw that Enel suddenly stopped talking and stared at him in confusion. Enel was brought back to his senses by Sakaski's question and responded in a panic. Ark, Ark, I'm parked in the backyard. Sakaski glanced at Enel strangely and nodded with relief. Okay, let's eat. Three people gathered at the dining table. Sakaski asked about the government affairs that Skylark had handled in recent days, and Skylark answered while complaining about how hard he worked. Enel just kept busy. Nor did he participate in the conversation between Sakaski and Skylark. Occasionally raise your head to look at them. He quickly lowered his head and revealed a smile. This kind of life looks good. After dinner, Sakaski asked Skylark to give Enel a copy of, Absolute Justice. Let him go to the guest room and study it slowly. Sakaski himself went to the study. He had one more thing to do. The layout of Sakaski's study is very simple. Two bookshelves. The bookshelf on the left mainly contains books on martial arts such as hockey training guides, fighting skills, swordsmanship guidelines, and Marine Six styles. The bookshelf on the right contains books on military theory, military art, administration, and humanities. In addition, there is a table, a chair and a bed. It seems that Sakaski took a rest in the study. Sakaski walked slowly to the window. Open the curtains and look at the bright moon in the sky. After a while. Only then did he take out a black striped phone bug from his pocket. The call was quickly answered. Aokiji. Sakaski slowly called out the other person's name. Although Kuzan has left Marine. But Sakaski prefers to be called Marine. Maybe it's because he's used to it, or maybe it's to keep Kuzan's heart in Marine. Sakaski, it's so late, do you have any missions? In a bathhouse far away on Fishman Island, Kuzan answered the phone with a puzzled look on his face. Aokiji, how are you doing? Have you come into contact with the mermaid princess? Things are going very well so far. Through contacting King Neptune, I found out that there is a target fruit user named Vanderdyken Ix who loves Princess Shirahoshi. He may have also discovered the specialness of Princess Shirahoshi and has been crazy about Princess Shirahoshi, pursuit. But he was very weak, and I easily solved him. Now he has won Neptune's initial trust, but it may take some time to fully gain their trust. Sakaski nodded. Regarding the fact that the mermaid princess is Poseidon, I guess King Neptune also had some vague speculations. So I didn't dare to contact anyone rashly, especially the former marine general under world government. But Sakaski knew how to solve the problem. Go to Fishman Street in Ryugu Kingdom and find the captain of the new Fishman Pirates, named Hody Jones. He is the real murderer of Princess Otohime, the queen of the Ryugu Kingdom. If you catch him and torture him about it in front of Neptune, I believe you can gain their complete trust. When Kuzan heard this, his face was filled with disbelief. He has been to Fishman Island for a while and has heard the story of Princess Otohime. The story says that Princess Otohime was shot and wounded by human pirates in order to protect the celestial dragons. Unexpectedly, it was a fishman who did it. Sakaski, you even know this. How long have you been secretly exploring Fishman Island? Kuzan could no longer imagine how long ago Sakaski had started planning a plan against world government. What a man with a terrifyingly deep city. Sakaski did not answer Kuzan's question. Looking at the moonlight outside the window, I changed my posture. His upper body was leaning on the window sill, his face gradually becoming indifferent. He said in a cold tone. The red-haired pirates attacked the Sabayati Islands yesterday and suffered heavy losses from me, but they still escaped tonight. If he wants to return to the New World, he will definitely pass by Fishman Island. You should watch closely at the entrance of Fishman Island and find the right opportunity to hit them hard again. Sakaski didn't think Kuzan could kill the red-haired man on his own, as long as he seriously injured him again. Kuzan was shocked when he heard Sakaski's words. It seems that what I said before about annihilating the four emperors within three years is not a joke. Got it. 
Kuzan responded seriously. No matter what, I will take advantage of this good opportunity to teach the red hair a lesson. Marine's face is not something that anyone can trample on at will. Hearing that Kuzan understood what he meant, Sakuski nodded and continued. The last thing is to find the previous Shichibukai, Jinbei. This is a very important person. He has deep feelings for Fish Man Island. Find a way to conquer him. The soldiers of Fish Man Island are a fighting force worth winning over. Now Fish Man Island no longer has the protection of Whitebeard. Many pirates are eyeing this place. I believe they will choose Kuzan, the top combat power of Marine. Sakuski simply arranged some tasks for Kuzan and hung up the phone. Then he took out a copy of, Marine Administrative and Military Management Framework, from the bookshelf on the right, returned to his desk and started browsing. The lonely lamp and shadow of the military parade book, the cold night and the cold wind and the moon are the companions. Kuzan no longer continued to soak in the bathhouse. After quickly packing up his luggage, he immediately walked towards the entrance of Fishman Island. We should fight unremittingly for justice on our own paths. Dot. 3,000 meters above Fishman Island. In the thousands of meters of deep sea here, the sun cannot shine all year round. So there was no light at all, it was extremely dark. Under the huge water pressure, the water flow is sometimes gentle and sometimes turbulent. But in this pitch black where you can't even see your fingers. Suddenly a pirate ship wrapped in bubbles appeared. Then, a few voices came from the pirate ship, breaking the dead silence of the deep sea. The behemoths of the deep sea surrounding the pirate ship were startled and moved away. It seems that there is something on this ship that can threaten their group of undersea overlords. Beckman, how far is it? The red-haired voice sounded weak. We'll reach Fish Man Island in about 3,000 meters. Shanks, just hang on, we can rest for a while on Fish Man Island. Beckman first glanced around. Then looking at the red-haired man's face as pale as paper, he frowned and said with a worried tone. I don't know what means the red-haired pirates used to coat their pirate ships. In a short time, he had escaped to the vicinity of Fishman Island. Today's red-haired pirate group's ship no longer has the hustle and bustle of the past. The only core members of the pirate group remaining are Captain Shanks, the red-haired captain, and Vice Captain Ben Beckman. The only other members of the pirate group are one navigator and two shipwrights. In other words, there are currently only five people on board this huge ship, the Red Foss. All others were left on the Sabayati Islands forever. The navigator and shipwright still escaped because they stayed on the ship. The only ones who really escaped from Sakuski were Red Hare and Beckman. During the retreat, Lucky Lou still couldn't get rid of the Marine with the lightning ability, so he is probably in danger. The Redhead sighed. This loss can be described as unprecedentedly heavy. In the end, Mr. Rayleigh's body was not recovered. Even the original goal was not achieved. There was an atmosphere of sadness on the ship. Looking at Beckman who was silent. The red hair felt very uncomfortable. It seems that ever since he went to Malinfando to show off during the war at the top, everything has been going wrong for a period of time. First, the poison dragon, who was fought to the death by Magellan when rescuing Luffy left some hidden problems. Then came the news that Mr. Rayleigh had been murdered and humiliated. Then on the way to send Luffy to the training place, he was blocked by Kaido. Now he is beaten like this on the Sabayati Islands. The redhead couldn't help but think. From a trainee pirate in the Roger Pirates to his current status as four emperors. It is very rare to have such a heavy loss. What exactly went wrong? The pirate ship descended very quickly, and the outline of the huge island below could be vaguely seen. The red-haired man looked at the flickering fish man island deep under the sea in the distance, with a strange light flashing in his eyes. Why do I have an ominous premonition in my heart? Just as the red-haired man was thinking about the reason, Beckman's voice came. Shanks, we're here. Hearing Beckman's cry, the red-haired man came back to his senses. It was discovered that the pirate ship was almost entering the entrance of fish man island. The pirate ship landed smoothly without being attacked by the large Poseidon class. Red Hare and Beckman slowly walked off the pirate ship and observed the surrounding environment. Everything is going smooth. But why is the uneasiness in my heart getting stronger and stronger? The redhead became slightly wary. As a top expert, the red-haired man still trusts his sixth sense. Shanks, you. 
Beckman couldn't help but wonder when he saw the red-haired man looking uneasy. Suddenly, the red-haired pupils shrank violently. Beckman, go quickly. The red-haired man reminded Beckman and wanted to board the ship immediately and start the pirate ship to leave. But it was too late. Ice age. A burst of cold air came, and ice flowers were flying all over the sky. The sea area behind the red-haired pirates was instantly frozen, and the ice extended into the depths of darkness. The red foss also turned into a small iceberg. Ah, you are a guest, don't leave in a hurry. A figure walked slowly from the coral bushes in the distance. The visitor had his hands in his pockets and a blindfold on his forehead, looking harmless. The red-haired man looked at the figure walking towards him. He looked at the vast ice behind him again, and his eyes became particularly solemn. Maybe I have to explain it here. Admiral Marine, Aokiji. Beckman took it seriously and reached for the flintlock gun on his waist. Kuzan walked to a dozen meters away from the red-haired pirates and stopped. Looking at the listless red-haired man and the bandaged Beckman. Kuzan was slightly shocked. I didn't expect Sakaski to be able to severely damage the red-haired pirates like this. If the opponent is in this state, he will definitely win. If there are just two people, it will take a lot of effort. He took his hands out of his pockets and stood upright, losing his usual lazy temperament. This is the former Marine General, please call me Kuzan. Kuzan exhaled a hint of coldness from his mouth and said in a slightly cold tone. So, you're not a Marine anymore, why are you stopping here? The redhead asked cautiously. It's a very bad situation to face Kuzan in his current state. Marine has withdrawn, but justice remains. Kuzan said slowly. At the same time, a cold wind blew through his coat, and ice scum began to appear on everyone's bodies. Murderous intent emerged instantly. Boom. Beckman looked at the frost that had condensed on Kuzan's body, and decisively pulled out his flintlock gun and pulled the trigger. The powerful sea floor stone bullet shot at Kuzan's head at high speed. In less than half a second, the bullet flew past and exploded Kuzan's head into pieces of ice. But neither Red Hair nor Beckman let down their guard at all. Violent pheasant mouth. Kuzan's figure quickly took shape in front of the two of them. His right hand instantly condensed into ice, and the coldness was overwhelming. Then he violently attacked the seriously injured red-haired man. A large ice bird several meters long, flapping its huge wings. He pounced on the weak red-haired man. But Beckman took a step forward and stood in front of the red-haired man. The flintlock handle was placed across his chest, barely counteracting the ice bird's power. Looking at Beckman in front of him, the red-haired man endured the pain on his body and was forced to pull out his sword, preparing for a life-or-death contest with Kuzan. The red-haired man standing behind Beckman naturally knew that Beckman was also injured in the battle with Kazaru. Although it was not as severe as his own, he still couldn't defeat Kuzan alone. However, when Beckman noticed the red hair's movements, he immediately turned his head and shouted. Shanks, you go and clear the way for the ship, I'll stop him first. Beckman just finished speaking. Regardless of whether the red-haired person agreed or not, he rushed forward and started fighting with Kuzan. See Beckman desperately trying to compete with Kuzan. The red-haired man gritted his teeth, turned around and ran quickly towards the pirate ship. And he swung his sword and freed the pirate ship that was blocked by ice. The redhead quickly went on board to check it out. Fortunately, the ship's power plant was not damaged by the freeze. But the navigator and shipwright inside were not so lucky and had already frozen to death. Ice skates. Kuzan was blocked by Beckmange after another round of attacks. As soon as his body retreated, the ice in his hand instantly condensed into a sharp short sword. Then he kicked his feet hard to the ground and stabbed Beckman at an extremely fast speed. Beckman looked at the tip of the knife approaching rapidly in front of him. I knew it was too late to escape. So he could only bite the bullet and raise his armed and domineering arms. He put his arms together and quickly put them in front of his chest. The sharp weapon turned from solid ice looked so sharp under the cover of Kuzan's powerful armed domineering force. There was a violent collision. The blade Kuzan held tightly in his right hand created large sparks on Beckman's forearm. But it failed to penetrate, only causing serious scratches on Beckman's skin. When Kuzan saw this scene, a strange color flashed in his eyes. As expected, he
he is the deputy closest to the four emperors in terms of strength. Beckman took a few steps back, feeling pain in his arm. Take advantage of Kuzan before he launches his next attack. Beckman pulled away and retreated, and in the blink of an eye he was 100 meters away from Kuzan. In this way, he can further develop his own advantages in gun fighting. Bang! 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 Three bullets were fired one after another, attacking Kuzan in an encircling formation. In less than a second, Kuzan was beaten into a pile of broken ice. Seeing this scene, Beckman just breathed out a heavy breath. However, he immediately raised his vigilance and glanced around, but Kuzan's figure was nowhere to be seen. Suddenly, Beckman secretly screamed something bad. He quickly turned around and ran towards the location of the pirate ship. It turns out that Kuzan's real target is still the redhead. At this time, the red hair had successfully started the pirate ship and slowly began to rise. Just as the red-haired man continued to use his sword energy to split the ice in front of him, clearing the way for the pirate ship. But he felt an extremely cold breath coming from behind. Without saying a word, the red-haired man turned the direction of the long sword behind him without hesitation. The dark red sword energy was forcibly increased tenfold, and a violent airwave approaching a hundred meters overturned the deck. The huge sword energy shattered all the dozens of ice spears emitting cold light that came from behind the red hair. Red hair, don't even think about escaping. Kuzan's figure has landed on the deck. The air conditioning drifted over the deck, making people feel chilly inside. Kuzan, since you have quit Marine, why bother pursuing him? The red-haired pirates don't have any grudge against you, do they? The red-haired man stared at Kuzan intently, trying to ease the cold atmosphere. At the same time, I felt quite confused inside. Kuzan didn't seem to be so serious about his life when he was still at Marine, right? Why has my appearance changed since first quit Marine? I am now more committed to my duties. Kuzan said nothing, not wanting to talk nonsense to the red-haired man. Instead, his eyes became colder and colder, and his piercing murderous intent was undisguised. He had heard from Sakaski that the red-haired man wanted to bury all the marines and Rayleigh on the Sabayati Islands. Kuzan will show no mercy to such pirates now. Frozen time capsule. Kuzan immediately released a shock wave of ice, targeting the red hair and attacking quickly. At the same time, a thick ice wall rose behind him, blocking Beckman who was coming. Boom. Ice and sword energy collided and clashed with each other. The seriously injured red-haired man had no strength at all, and he soon fell into a disadvantage. God avoids. The red-haired man roared, his expression extremely ferocious. He swung the sword in his hand with all his strength, pulling the wound on his chest, making him feel even more painful. The red-haired man who was suppressed and beaten by Kuzan knew that he would lose sooner or later if this continued. Instead of doing this, it's better to give it a try. A majestic sword energy suddenly burst out. The ship's decks seemed no longer able to withstand the damage done by their owners. It began to scream in pain, as if it was about to collapse in the next second. Kuzan also looked serious as he looked at the huge sword energy, which was several times more powerful than before. Ice Age. In an instant, with Kuzan's feet as the center, a radius of several hundred meters completely turned into a land of ice and snow. Although most of the red hair's sword energy was condensed. But there are still a few traces of Conqueror's domineering sword energy leaking out of the ice. The sharp edge cut Kuzan's coat. It left several moderately deep scars on his skin. Kuzan glanced at the blood emerging from his skin and frowned. The blood instantly turned into ice cubes and fell to the ground. The red hair on the other side was completely frozen at this time and could not move. Shanks. Beckman, who had just run off to nowhere, finally appeared. A bullet was skillfully fired, shattering the ice cubes on the red hair's body without damaging the red hair at all. Before Kuzan could continue his attack, Beckman fired several rounds in Kuzan's direction. Kuzan looked at the sea stone bullets flying in front of him and moved his hands slightly. Several ice spikes shot out instantly and collided with it. The bullets were blocked and could only fall to the ground feebly. After shooting down the bullet, Kuzan turned his head to look in the direction of the red hair, but there was no sign of anyone anywhere. It turned out that Beckman was blocked by the ice wall just now and was not in a hurry to break it open. Instead, 
he changed his direction to break through the ice in the surrounding sea and forcibly created a passage. Now Beckman has abandoned the ship and is swimming toward the passage with red hair on his back. This is the advantage of not eating the devil fruit. You can avoid danger in the sea. Kuzan looked at the two people who were about to leave the waters of Fishman Island. He quickly used ice to open a path in the deep sea. An ice tunnel big enough to hold a person appeared instantly. Kuzan immediately pulled away and chased after him, but he was still slower than the two physical strongmen without fruit abilities. Seeing the two people getting further and further away, Kuzan made a quick decision and swung his right arm forward fiercely. Using the frozen fruit ability with all his strength, an ice dragon dozens of meters long appeared in front of Kuzan, roaring towards the red-haired two. Feeling the threat behind him, Beckman quickly turned around and swam in a different direction with the red hair on his back. Although he was very fast, the red hair behind his back was still bitten by the ice dragon's huge fangs on his left leg. Feeling the huge resistance behind him, Beckman looked back at the unshakable ice and gritted his teeth. He turned around directly, raised his right hand covered with armed domineering energy, and turned his palm into a sword. After less than a second of hesitation, he severely chopped off the red-haired left leg that was completely frozen. The title of the red-haired, one-legged, one-armed emperor was born. The unconscious red-haired man felt a burst of severe pain, groaned, and almost woke up from the pain. But he was too seriously injured and still couldn't wake up. Freed from the shackles of the ice dragon, perhaps without the weight of one leg, Beckman swam faster. In less than a breath, he completely disappeared into the darkness. At this time, Kuzan caught up to where Beckman had just stopped and glanced at the frozen left leg in the ice dragon's mouth. Kuzan frowned tightly as he looked at the red-haired and Beckman who had disappeared. Then he took out a phone that was shivering from the cold from his pocket. Blue, blue. Sakaski, the redhead escaped again. But I kept his left leg. As Kuzan said that, he took out the familiar calf from the ice dragon's mouth and looked up and down. It was two o'clock in the morning, and Sakaski, who was far away from Marine headquarters, was still awake. After hearing Kuzan's report, Sakaski also frowned. Didn't you expect that the redhead escaped death as expected? However, the red-haired left leg was actually broken by Kuzan, which is good news. Four emperors are not that easy to kill, so just run away. Now that the red-haired pirates are on the verge of being wiped out, and he himself is missing arms and legs, he is no longer a threat. In the future, if you find an opportunity to bring a few generals to surround him and Beckman, the four emperors will be completely wiped out in the dust of history. Although it's a pity that he couldn't kill the red hair now, his future is limited to this. Kuzan nodded upon hearing this. After losing the duel with Sakaski, he wanted to quit Marine and then join a certain four emperors pirate group to disintegrate them from within. Unexpectedly, Sakaski's method was ruthless enough to defeat the four emperors head-on without having to surrender to the four emperors unconscionably. Next, win over the sea hero, Jinbei as soon as possible, and then maintain a good relationship with King Neptune and control the mermaid princess. There's still a battle ahead for you. Sakaski arranged Kuzan's subsequent tasks in an orderly manner. Well, I'm going to Fishman Street now to find the Hody Jones you mentioned. Although Kuzan doesn't know what kind of battle will require him next. But after hearing Sakaski's urging, he still understood the importance of Poseidon Poseidon and struck first to avoid variables. So Kuzan decided not to sleep tonight. Of course, Hody Jones can't sleep either. I haven't been so passionate for a long time. Sure enough, life has a direction and work has motivation. Kuzan looked at the phone that had been hung up in his hand, and the corner of his mouth raised a slight arc. Then he strode towards the depths of Fishman Island. The figure is extremely strong and high-spirited, like a poplar stationed in the yellow sand on the border. Silently supporting a piece of blue sky and white clouds in the unknown darkness. After Sakaski hung up the phone from Kuzan, he fell into deep thought. The red hair is no longer a concern, but the Luffy he trained is a troublesome pirate. This time, Luffy was not seen on his pirate ship. It seemed that he had been sent somewhere to practice. If left unchecked, Luffy and his companions would gather together again in a year or two and become a threat no less powerful than the four emperors. It's not that easy to deal with the Nika fruit after it awakens. Although he didn't know where Luffy went, 
he knew the island where his companions were blown away by Bartholomew Bear. Except for Zorro's flight to Mahawk's Island, which was a bit tricky, the others were not a problem. This group of people needs to find an opportunity to deal with it. Catch those who deserve to be arrested, and execute those who deserve to be executed. Now Blackbeard has Marco and others as cannon fodder. You can also arrange for Garp, who has a grudge against Blackbeard, to take the lead. Although he killed Ace himself, it was Blackbeard who captured Ace. Without Blackbeard there would be no war. Garp had no reason to refuse the mission he assigned to him to attack the Blackbeard pirates. Kaido has already hired Drake as an undercover agent, and will ask him to instigate Kaido's daughter Yamato. When combined with the warriors from Wano, they are a powerful force. Only Charlotte Linlin has no targeted arrangement plan. Where can we find the entry point? Taking advantage of a supernova like Luo. But not everyone is as easy to cheat as Luo. This matter still needs long-term consideration. After Sakaski finished thinking, he realized that the moon outside the window had disappeared. The sky in the distance turned slightly white, and it was almost dawn. Another sleepless night. Sakaski walked to the window and looked out the window at the Marine Headquarters building not far away in the early morning mist. A vague shadow dozens of meters high in front of the building can be vaguely seen. Looking at the square outline, Sakaski suddenly realized something, quickly sorted it out, and hurried out of the house. The sun rises and a new day begins. News that Marine Fleet Admiral Sakaski led the Marines to defeat the red-haired pirates on the Sabayati Island spread like wildfire and began to spread across the sea. Those who first heard the news expressed shock. Marine first killed the Whitebeard pirates and then the Red Hair pirates. The situation in the sea seems to have become completely unstable. If the red-haired man returns to the New World, more people will definitely find out about his broken leg and group destruction. At that time, this round of news will explode even more, and the storm in the New World will become even more violent. Marine's Majesty has begun to gradually return under Sakaski's control. Marine Headquarters, Fleet Admiral Office. A stiff atmosphere lingered among the three people in the room. Sakaski ignored the livid Luo and continued to smoke his cigar. Yunk stared at Luo cautiously, fearing that he would take action in the next second. Although there will definitely be no problems with Uncle Sakaski by his side. But it would be best if you can solve it yourself. Don't bother Uncle Sakaski with anything. After a while, Luo, who was silent for a while, finally spoke. Head of Fleet Admiral, is this the promise Marine kept as you said last night? Although Luo was very angry inside, he still did not act rashly. He is a calm and collected person. There was once a man who taught him how to be quiet with his life. Seeing that Luo calmed down quickly, Sakaski couldn't help but nodded in appreciation. It's for your own good that I won't give you the position of Shichibukai. Do you want to be cleared by Marine's people in a few days after becoming Shichibukai? Luo Wenyan was stunned for a moment, and his mind couldn't turn around for a while. What? What do you mean? Isn't the Shichibukai in partnership with Marine? Isn't it a legal pirate recognized by the world government? Luo recalled the relevant terms promised by world government when it recruited Shichibukai. This should be true. Sakaski couldn't help but sneer. Even the Skylark next to him showed a look of contempt. This made Luo even more confused. What's going on? Skylark looked at Luo's confused expression and saw that Sakaski was not in a hurry to explain, so he couldn't help but stand up and said. Marine cooperates with pirates. Are officials and gangsters colluding? This is ridiculous. The last two generations of Marine Fleet Admiral were incompetent, which allowed the group of pirates occupying the Shichibukai position to run rampant and plunder. Now that Uncle Sakaski has come to power, he will never allow this situation to continue. Mentioning the previous two generations of Fleet Admiral, Skylark showed unabashed disdain. But when it comes to Sakaski, Skylark's face is filled with pride. Sakaski heard Skylark say bad things about the former Fleet Admiral, and felt that these words seemed familiar. Hiss, now that I think about it, he must have been led astray by that guy Doberman, right? After hearing what Skylark said, Luo couldn't help but turn his eyes to Sakaski in his seat. Expect him to give an explanation. Luo, what was the original purpose of Shichibukai's existence? Sakaski did not respond directly to Luo, but looked at the chart on the wall of the office and asked leisurely. 
Luo thought for a moment and came up with the answer. Is one of the three major forces known as the Grand Line together with the four emperors and marine headquarters, Shichibukai helps the world government check and balance the four emperors and maintain the stability of the sea. Luo Shin said firmly. In his mind, as long as he becomes a Shichibukai like that man, he can compete with him. Then which one of them is going to check and balance the four emperors? Who can beat the four emperors group? It might be possible for them all to join forces and fight against a group of four emperors, but that's unlikely to happen. The Shichibukai cooperate with the world government on the surface, but in fact their interests are not completely consistent with the world government. They each have their own purposes and are destined not to join forces, and the world government will not allow them to join forces. Crocodile and Doflamingo used the name of Shichibukai to secretly implement their dirty plans and persecuted countless people. After Blackbeard got the title of Shichibukai, he immediately went to impel down to free the criminals. After achieving his goal, he immediately gave up the title of Shichibukai. Moria used the name Shichibukai to recharge his batteries in the Devil's Triangle and cultivated a large number of zombies. Both Jinbei and Hancock only used their identities as Shichibukai to protect their countries. Da Shang is trying to steal marine and world government secrets for the Revolutionary Army. Buggy, who was later recruited, even used Shichibukai's identity to make money. He established the pirate dispatch company, Buggy Express, in New World and made a lot of money. And Hawkeye should be the purest among the Shichibukai. He has no power of his own and has always been sitting on his coffin board and walking alone on the sea. He joined Shichibukai just because he was afraid that Marine would cause trouble for him. Sakuski looked at the stunned Luo and suddenly changed the subject. Your purpose is to seek revenge against the Shichibukai from New World, right? You. Dot how do you know? Luo's eyes were full of disbelief. He felt that he had no secrets at all in front of this man. As for Rosinante, oh, Corazon, I am also very sorry for what happened to him. He is Marine's hero. It is precisely because he risked his life many times to pass on information about the Don Quixote family to Marine that he prevented more ordinary people from becoming slaves. The Skylark next to him heard the words, Don Quixote family, and, slave, and his body couldn't help but trembled, but no one noticed this. It's a pity that he disobeyed Marine's order in the end to save you. Sakuski sighed, and then looked at Luo with a scrutinizing look. I saw Luo looking in pain at this time. He no longer doubted the veracity of Sakuski's words. Luo's voice became hoarse and dull as if recalling the scene of Corazon's sacrifice to save himself. I, I am very grateful to Mr. Corazon, so I want to avenge him. Hearing Luo's decisive cry, Sakuski smiled disdainfully. Thanksgiving. Revenge. Corazon saved you from the brink of death and gave you hope of life, but you became a pirate. Corazon is Marine's lifelong enemy, a pirate. Do you think Corazon's spirit in heaven should be proud or sad when he sees you using your identity as a pirate to avenge him? Sakuski's questions were eloquent, leaving Luo speechless. Although Corazon's purpose is just to let Luo live a good life with kindness. And he knew that in order to better protect Luo who had eaten the fruits of the operation, Luo could not be allowed to join Marine and be exposed under the eyes of the world government. But only Sakuski knew this, not Luo, who was living in guilt. Seeing that Luo lowered his head and made no movement, Sakuski knew that he had to add more fire. Corazon did not hesitate to disobey military orders and save a pirate like you. It is really not a pity to die. Just saying that he is a hero really flatters him. Luo raised his head suddenly, his eyes filled with tears and bloodshot eyes. He immediately took out the, ghost cry, from his waist, pointed at Sakuski, and shouted angrily. What did you say? Even if you were Mr. Corazon's boss, I won't allow you to say that to Mr. Corazon. The Skylark next to him also immediately raised the flintlock gun in his hand and aimed it at Luo, and gave a cold drink. Presumptuous. Put down the knife. Sakuski waved to Skylark. Then he slowly stood up, placed his hands on the desk, and leaned forward slightly. A pair of deep eyes reflected Luo's face filled with grief and anger. Then let me ask you, Corazon paved the way for you with his life, what are you doing now? Thank you Corazon, shouldn't you live with his will? Could it be that Corazon's wishes for you to become a pirate? Luo fell silent for a moment and put down the raised knife feebly. 
Then what should I do? Marine won't do anything to Shichibukai. Form a pirate group to join Shichibukai and then find powerful allies to deal with Doflamingo together. This is the only way I can think of. Apart from this, is there any other way I can go? Luo spoke in a low voice through gritted teeth, with a tone of reluctance, as if he was like a deflated ball. Besides getting the position of Shichibukai, I can't think of any better way. Can I still? Suddenly, his tone paused, as if he realized something. Luo's eyes suddenly widened and he looked at Sakuski in disbelief. Seeing Luo's expression, Sakuski raised the corner of his mouth slightly, knowing that he understood what he meant. Don't let Corazon down, now your pirate group is a good cover. I believe Corazon has taught you his kindness and justice. As far as I know, your heart pirates haven't done anything extraordinary in the past few years. Instead, you have used your medical skills to help many people. Luo was still in shock and was stammering when speaking. But. Dot but, this. I. Sakuski couldn't help but frowned when he saw Luo acting like a mother-in-law. Skylark, go get that thing. After hearing Sakuski's instructions, Skylark walked towards the cabinet behind the desk. He took out a black box, opened it, and found a very old-fashioned marine military uniform inside. Sakuski took the very old military uniform handed over by Skylark. In Luo's doubtful eyes, he gently touched it with his hand with a solemn and heavy expression. After smoothing out the wrinkles on it, he slowly opened his mouth. This is the new military uniform Marine gave Corazon when he was promoted to commander of the headquarters. He hasn't worn it many times yet. After he took off this dress and left Marine to go to the Don Quixote family, he never came back to wear this dress. Since Corazon entrusted his life and faith to you, then this military uniform should be handed over to you. Sakuski sighed with emotion. Then, holding the old military uniform in both hands, under Luo Ran's stunned gaze, he solemnly handed it to his chest. The air was quiet for a long time. Sakuski did not urge him, and still held the military uniform with his hands as steady as a mountain. After a long time, Luo slowly inserted the saber in his hand into his waist. Then he raised his hands tremblingly. But he suddenly paused in midair, hesitated for a few seconds, and then let it go again. The skylark next to him thought Luo was going to refuse. That was something Uncle Sakuski had a hard time forging, well, it was a hard time finding it. But I saw Luo's lowered hands wiping heavily on his windbreaker with, Corazon, printed on it. It was as if he wanted to have Corazon's persistence, perseverance, justice and kindness in his hands. It was also like scrubbing his hands that had been stained with pirate blood. Sakuski watched Luo's movements silently and continued to wait patiently. After a while, Luo raised his hands again, this time his hands no longer trembled and his heart no longer hesitated. He firmly caught the old but not tattered military uniform. Feeling the heavy marine uniform in his hand, Luo's heart throbbed hard. A clear tear fell on the collar of the military uniform. In an instant, Luo burst into tears. Mr. Corazon, I feel it. Kid, even though you stabbed me with a knife at that time, I didn't feel any pain at all. You should be the one who is really suffering, you poor little ghost Luo. I will definitely bring back the fruits of the operation. Even if I die, you must remember me. I died with a smile. Luo, don't live with hatred and destruction anymore, come and feel the warmth and justice of the world. In that cold winter when the sky was full of snow, there was a refreshing warmth, and that warmth was called Corazon. Sakuski sat back on the office chair. After Luo calmed down his emotions, he slowly said. Your next task is to get rid of the two Shichibukai Da Flamingo and Buggy, the Pirate Empress Hancock and Hawkeye Mahawk. I will send people to deal with them, and then. Sakuski was about to continue speaking when Luo suddenly interrupted. Wait, wait, I know the other three, but is Buggy the one with the red nose? Why is he a Shichibukai? Luo looked confused. Did Sakuski say something wrong, or did he understand it wrong? Sakuski's lips curled up slightly when he heard this, but he didn't explain. He took out a few pieces of paper directly from under the desk and pushed them in front of Luo. Luo picked it up and looked at it suspiciously. What? Shichibukai recruitment order. Weibel is also a target of recruitment. If that's the case, why bother killing him? 
Argue Marines afraid of being blamed by the world government. Sakaski sat on the chair with a puzzled look and asked. Didn't you kill Weibel? Marine never sent a warship to hunt him down. The smart Luo suddenly understood and looked at Sakaski with a complicated expression. So you started. A sneer appeared on Sakaski's lips. Don't look like this. We Marine and world government are destined to be different people. You only need to obey the orders of me, the Marine Fleet Admiral. Luo's pupils suddenly trembled violently, a cold air shot up from the soles of his feet, and his whole body felt cold. Not a stranger. I only follow your orders. You mean. Luo didn't dare to ask any more questions. He seemed to know something terrible. Sakaski shook his head and ordered Skylark to get a domineering training guide that was only available at Marine Headquarters. The other pirates on the recruitment order are also handed over to you. As for Da Flamingo, when the time is right, I will notify you to go to Dressrosa. That man won't be easy for you to deal with. Someone will help you then. In addition to Buggy and the Dead Weeble, the world government also gave several targets. For example, the Wolf Pirates, Silver Axe Pirates, etc. were entrenched in the first half of New World and were unable to compete for the position of four emperors. The strength is not very strong, so it can be left to Luo, a supernova, to solve it. As for Buggy, he dared to join forces with Crocodile and Mahak to form a cross-union in the future and put a bounty on Marine. He has absolutely no ability at all, but he has caused a lot of trouble. Even if that clown from the Roger Pirates really hid some strength and had an ulterior motive, he shouldn't play the clown in front of Marine. Although I understand that you want to solve your top priority as soon as possible, you must first improve your own strength, otherwise you will die. Sakaski handed the domineering training guide to Luo. It contains the training techniques for hockey of the observation color and the armed color, as well as many comments from senior Marine. It should be very helpful for people like you who have not yet mastered hockey. Okay, take this phone bug and hurry up to practice, time waits for no one. Sakaski gave Ro another black striped phone bug. Luo put the training guide book and phone bug into his pocket, holding the heavy marine uniform in his arms. He nodded heavily to Sakaski, and then stepped out of the office door resolutely. When Luo was about to leave the office, Sakaski suddenly called him. There is a monument in the center of the square in front of the building with Corazon's name engraved on it. You can go and commemorate it. Luo paused for a moment, then closed the door and left completely, leaving only a light response. Okay. Sakaski Fleet Admiral. Sakaski in the office heard those faint words with his keen senses, and a smile flashed at the corner of his mouth. Then he turned to look at Skylark and sighed secretly. Skylark, in the next few months, you can use your evening time to follow Enel and train a little more with Teacher Zepha. The follow-up action on Da Flamingo will allow you to take over some of it. This is a final explanation for your unfortunate experience when you were six years old. In 1500 AD, Sakaski returned to North Blue. That year, he rescued Skylark from the slave pirates and adopted him as his adopted daughter. After a subsequent investigation, it was discovered that the slave ship was inextricably linked to the Don Quixote family that was then entrenched in North Blue. However, due to the limited rights of his position, he faced Da Flamingo, who has the blood of the Celestial Dragon. And still became Da Flamingo of the Seven Warlords of the Sea. Sora and Sengoku have always had a compromising attitude. Sakaski could only repeatedly warn Skylark to be patient. Now, I have finally endured the day that is coming. But Marine can't act openly and can only show up at the end. And Da Flamingo can't die so early, he will need to be used as bait to catch a big fish later. Everything was planned by Sakaski. Just wait. Those arrogant black sheep. When Skylark heard Sakaski's words, he couldn't help but be startled, and his hands that packed the documents were also stunned. I know. Thank you, Uncle Sakaski. I'm satisfied now. Skylark lowered his head slightly covering up the tears in the corners of his eyes, and said thank you inaudibly. Uncle Sakaski said, don't be so pretentious. Seeing Skylark's appearance, Sakaski opened his mouth slightly, wanting to say something else. Suddenly, the phone on the table rang. Sakaski took a closer look. The call from five elders seems to be about the red hair incident. Sakaski, is this how you handle the red-haired pirate's affairs? As soon as he opened his mouth, 
it was the legal martial god, Waukyu Lishung with a birthmark on his forehead. Obviously for accountability. Hearing Wo Chu Li Sheng's unceremonious question, Sakaski frowned. Master Five Elders, didn't you ask me to come forward to deal with the red-haired one? Is there anything I didn't handle appropriately? Oh. You blame me for not killing the red hair completely, right? Sakaski said with a look of realization. Sakaski, stop pretending to be stupid. You know Marine can't start a fight with the four emperors at will. This time I just asked you to persuade the red-haired man to retreat. It would be better for you to start a fight directly. Wo Chu Li Sheng snorted coldly and exposed Sakaski's little trick. The world government is still afraid of angering the crazy people in New World, especially the four emperors. It would be a very troublesome thing if they were to hit the holy land of Mary Joa. Five elders, I don't know. The Warring States Fleet Admiral didn't teach me how to be a coward before he abdicated. Sakaski seemed still aggrieved, but there was a sneer on the corner of his mouth. I won't be like that coward in the Warring States period. He loudly shouted, justice for the king to rule the world but what he did in his hands was, justice for the army to surrender to thieves. Sakaski. Watch your attitude. We can make you a fleet admiral, or we can remove you from your fleet admiral position. Not only Wo Chu Li Sheng, but also several other five elders who were watching were also very angry. Don't be angry, five elders. The warring states period certainly didn't teach me this. You also know that I have always been at odds with him. If you are afraid of retaliation, I will gather people to search for the red hair in New World and wait for an opportunity to surround and kill him. The five elders were silent for a long time. I don't know if I believed Sakaski's words. Did the Warring States period have such big opinions on Sakaski? Weren't some of the unspoken rules of world government taught to Sakaski? It took a long time before Wo Chu Li Sheng's voice came through. The red hair has a special identity and cannot be killed. Be careful when doing things in the future and don't try to break the balance of the sea. Sakaski couldn't help but sneer inwardly. Don't you want to break your long-term stable rule? As for the identity of the redhead. He, Sakaski, doesn't care whether the commander of the Knights of God, Saint Garin, is his red-haired father or his grandfather. He wanted to spread the ashes of two people before and after. By the way, how's things going with Shichibukai? Saint Satan, the god of scientific defense, took this opportunity to ask. Sir, since the collapse of the Whitebeard Pirates, the current situation in New World is extremely chaotic. Countless pirates are fighting for the throne of Whitebeard's four emperors, including the group of pirates in the recruitment order. Unfortunately, Edward Wable had a conflict with the captain of the Heart Pirates, Trafalgar Law, some time ago and was killed by him. We at Marine are still looking for the other pirates. Quote, Sakaski said it with all his heart, and it can be said that he was telling lies with his eyes open. The five elders had no doubts, however. After all, New World is indeed chaotic right now. Even the CP organizations of the world government are lurking in every corner with fear. If the news of the red-haired pirate's damage spreads, the whirlpool in New World will become even more violent. Get the Shichibukai's location together as soon as possible. It will take some time for Vegapunk's latest weapon to be completed. Also, Trafalgar Law is the boy who once ate the fruit of the operation, right? If you have the chance, recruit him into the Shichibukai, or capture him alive. Five elders briefly explained these things and hung up the phone. Sakaski rubbed his chin and fell into thought. Does the world government still value Luo's fruit ability so much? I heard that the fruit of the operation can make people immortal, but the price is the life of the capable person. Is this true? Did I am on the throne of the void survive for 800 years because of the immortality surgery? What about the five elders guys? Marine Fleet Admiral has changed from Cyborg Kong to Warring States period, and then to himself, and has become a third generation person. But the five elders have always been that group of people. How long did they live? How strong is it? Did they control every generation of users with surgical fruit abilities, or did they have other ways to extend their lifespan? These are all unknown questions, and we can only wait for Sakaski to explore and explore them step by step. Uncle Sakaski, if the five elders do not allow Marine to start a war with the four emperors, how will the next plan proceed? Skylark's worried words brought Sakaski's attention back. Looking at Skylark's worried face, Sakaski smiled slightly. 
Even though it was a very cold smile, it made Yunk feel extremely at ease. Just listen to Sakuski slowly spit out a few words. Then let there be chaos within Maria Joya so that they have no time to worry about the war between Marine and the four emperors. After a short pause, Sakuski continued. Skylark, please adjust Ghost Spider's position and let him go to the Sabayati Islands to serve as the Marine base commander there. I have pulled out the nail planted by the world government, Lieutenant General Exiomir. It's time to clean up the islands of Sabayati and teach the celestial dragons there a bloody lesson. A cold light flashed in Sakuski's eyes. These pigs can't die so cheaply, they have to be put to good use. Skylark looked solemn. He was not at all alarmed by the words, I want to operate on the celestial dragons. Start making phone calls immediately to make job transfer adjustments. In front of the Marine Headquarters building, at Bay Plaza. The warm sunshine enveloped the earth, but it did not appear blazing. In the huge square, as far as the eye can see, there is a crowd of people. Except for Marine soldiers in military uniforms. There were even ordinary people wearing plain clothes. Outside the cordons of various magnificent military fortresses. Under the guidance of the corresponding Marine soldiers, this group of civilians gathered around a huge stone monument standing majestically in the center of the square. Most of these civilians are family members of Marines who died during the war. The Marine Heroes Monument was officially completed yesterday. So today they came to pay homage to those heroes who passed away. No one was talking loudly. Some people are mumbling to themselves, or some people are pointing to the stone tablet and whispering to the children next to them. Everyone's face was very serious and solemn. A red warning line was also drawn around the stone monument. And there is a soldier standing guard at each of the four corners. They took turns changing shifts and never left each other, as if they were accompanying this stone monument. The moving crowd came to a slow stop in front of this stone monument. Luo in the crowd slowly raised his head and looked at the huge monument in front of him. The dark stone tablet is covered with densely packed names. There are a lot of them but they are arranged in an orderly manner and don't look messy at all. It is estimated that the tens of thousands of names do not occupy the entire steel. There is still a large blank area on the square stone tablet that is nearly 100 meters high. It seems to be warning the world that victory has not yet come. The war is not over yet, and there may be more victims at any time. A short message is engraved from top to bottom in the center of the stone tablet. The heroic spirit of Marine will live forever. I wonder if it is due to psychological factors that cause everyone to have misconceptions. These words seem to exude a faint smell of gunpowder smoke. It's like dreaming back to the battlefield in a hazy state. These are the words written by Sakuski Fleet Admiral who turned lava into a pen and carried it with his own hands. Luo suddenly heard a man who looked like a marine officer next to him whisper. No wonder you smell the unique sulfur smell of magma. The marine officer next to Luo glanced at Luo. Out of the corner of his eye, he looked at the military uniform held in Luo's hand. He stopped talking and took a step forward to walk out of the crowd. The two soldiers stationed in front of the stone monument immediately saluted solemnly. Lieutenant General Doberman. Doberman nodded and returned a standard military salute. Then he walked towards the huge base under the stone monument. I saw several large characters engraved on the base. Marine Heroes Monument. The front of the pedestal is filled with flowers. Yellow and white chrysanthemums are neatly arranged together. There is a particularly conspicuous bunch of blood red roses in the middle. It seemed very fresh, as if it had just been picked, and still contained the morning dew. Swaying in the wind among the flowers, it is extremely charming. Doberman took out a bouquet of white chrysanthemums from the inner pocket of his marine coat. He gently placed it in front of the base and bowed deeply three times. Then he raised his head again and stared at the stone tablet for a few seconds, then stepped away from the crowd and walked towards the headquarters building. When the surrounding civilians saw Doberman leaving, they placed the flowers in their hands in front of the pedestal under the guidance of the soldiers. Everyone bowed and then stared at the stone tablet silently. A solemn atmosphere permeated the crowd. The horn of justice seems to be floating in the air. Only Luo stood there blankly, without any movement. This dark monument starts from the first line to the last line. Countless names carry the souls of countless marine heroes. History will never forget their greatness.
Luo stared blankly at the name Don Quixote Rosinandi in one line of the stone tablet. Corazon's voice and smile appeared in his mind again. Go ahead, Luo, go to a distant place, there will be nothing binding you anymore. With the iron border beyond the white town and the short life of human life, nothing will stop you. Luo hugged the old military uniform tightly with both hands, his eyes red again. On the high platform of the headquarters building, Sakuski walked out of the office and quietly looked at Luo among the crowd in the square. Seeing the tenacity and determination in his eyes, I nodded with satisfaction. Uncle Sakuski, Uncle Doberman is here. Hearing Skylark's report indoors, Sakuski withdrew his gaze and turned back to the office. Doberman, who had just sat down on the sofa and chatted enthusiastically with Skylark, immediately stood up. He gave a military salute to Sakuski solemnly, and at the same time a loud voice sounded. Sakuski Fleet Admiral. Sakuski glanced at the scar-faced lieutenant general with squinted eyes. The lieutenant general's eyes were full of stars, and his admiration almost overflowed. He casually waved his hand and told him to sit down. Doberman, I just saw you going to the monument to send flowers. Sakuski asked as he walked back to his seat. Yes. Sakuski Fleet Admiral, there are several old friends of mine in it. Although he is not from the same faction as us, he still sacrificed his life for justice. The war at the top not only sacrificed many school-level officers, but also several lieutenant generals. Even though there were many Marine senior officials present at the time. But Sakuski was the only one who really contributed. While dealing with Whitebeard, he could only do his best to protect the generals of the Hawks. It is impossible to take care of all the generals. This is also the reason why Sakuski dislikes Sengoku. As the Marine Fleet Admiral at the time, he had been watching the show. Don't say anything. Fleet Admiral must maintain its military morale and cannot go into battle easily. Whitebeard and his old men dragged their sick bodies to the battlefield, while you, the Warring States period, were still on the execution platform. Isn't this a waste of time for the Marine soldiers who are desperately trying to kill the enemy? As for the, Marine hero, Garp probably wishes Marine would lose more troops so that the Whitebeard pirates can rescue Ace. The combat power of five generals, two alternate generals, and a crane staff who is not weaker than the alternate generals. All the military attaches in the audience actually acted on the occasion, causing the mainstay of Lieutenant General Marine to lose several positions. It has to be said that the superstructure determines the fate of the middle class. Sakuski still hasn't figured it out. How could such a cowardly, compromising, and peace-seeking fleet admiral be so domineering as conquerors? How did you shout the slogan, justice reigns in the world? This world is unreasonable. So it was up to Sakuski himself to solve the problem from the source. Kick out the people who caused the problem first. Then mentally rearm all marines. Sakuski Fleet Admiral, I didn't expect you to go earlier than me. I saw that bunch of red roses that stood out from the crowd. Doberman continued, with warm admiration in his tone. It turns out that before dawn in the morning, Sakuski went to pay homage to his fallen comrades. When Sakuski heard Doberman mention that he went to the monument to pay his respects, he just nodded slightly. Didn't stop at this issue. Doberman, I have sent ghost spiders to guard the islands of Sabayati. You also know that the islands of Sabayati are the islands next to Malinfando, the center of justice in the world. Not only are there countless pirates wandering up there all year round, but they are actually carrying out extremely evil slave trading transactions on the surface. How ridiculous. This is not something that absolute justice can allow to exist. Now Lieutenant General Exiamir, the former Marine base commander who colluded with the Tianlong people, was unfortunately killed by the red-haired pirates. What do you think should be done next? Doberman immediately understood what Sakuski meant. Immediately he stood up and shouted angrily. I have long disliked that Exiamir. He died well. As for the ghost spider going to the Sabayati Islands later, I think we can all arrange for our people to completely wipe out the pirates on the islands. Then the matter of slave trading is authorized by the Tianlong people, but, it may be. Doberman's voice gradually became quieter, and his eyes towards Sakuski became hesitant, and at the same time he felt a little uneasy. When he faced the white beard and the red hair, he never felt so nervous. 
For a long time, he saw that Sakuski remained silent and just stared at him expressionlessly. An inexplicable look flashed in Doberman's eyes, and he asked hesitantly. Or. Doberman raised his right hand, turned his palm into a knife and placed it on his neck, making a gesture. Coupled with his face covered with scars, this action looked extremely ferocious and terrifying. Sakuski nodded invisibly. As expected of his die-hard fan, he is very wise. Doberman naturally caught the recognition in Sakuski's eyes, and all the tension was gone. I just feel like my heart is on fire, this is absolute justice. Sure enough, you are right to follow the path guided by Sakuski Fleet Admiral. Doberman, it's up to you to assist Ghost Spider in handling this matter. After all, those pig minions are protected by CP0. It may not be easy to deal with the Ghost Spider alone. In addition, I will ask Magellan to release a few pirates who have a deep hatred for the Celestial Dragons from Impel Down. You can go and connect them secretly. I don't need to tell you how to deal with the conflicting relationship between them, right? Doberman immediately nodded heavily upon hearing this. He originally had 1,000 soldiers under his command, and after Sakuski became Fleet Admiral, he evenly distributed the 3,000 soldiers he led when he was a general among Doberman, Ghost Spider, and Huo Shaoshan. Now he has 2,000 soldiers, which is enough for him and Ghost Spider to cause a bloody storm on the Sabayati Islands. Remember to cripple it first, don't kill it so quickly, it can still be of some use. Sakuski didn't want those rubbish to die directly, but he had a complete plan in mind. After sending Doberman away, Sakuski called Magellan and asked him to select some suitable pirates in the prison. Time passed quietly in a hurry. One week later, the second half of the Grand Line, New World. Big news. The captain of the red-haired pirates, Shanks, had his leg broken by Marine during the previous battle on the Sabayati Islands. Now only he and the deputy captain, Ben Beckman, are left in the entire pirate group. Finally, a brave pirate group discovered this incident while challenging the red-haired pirate group, and began to spread the word in the New World waters. However, they all agreed that the red-haired Shanks had his legs broken by Marine Fleet Admiral Sakuski on the Sabayati Islands. Really? Doesn't the red hair only have one leg and one arm left? Can he still sit on the throne of the four emperors like this? The big man who spread the news suddenly looked at the person who asked the question with contempt. You underestimate the red-haired man too much. I heard that the red-haired man with a broken leg did not lose much strength. He still wiped out all the invading pirate groups with force. If you ask me, even if both of Red Hair's legs are broken, as long as he still has one hand that can swing the sword, he will always be the four emperors. Don't forget to remove his terrifying swordsmanship that can rival the world's greatest swordsman Hawkeye, as well as his top-notch conqueror's domineering aura. Besides, look at other people's golden lions who have lost both of their legs. Ah. The person who raised the question couldn't help but ask in a low voice. You think too highly of red hair, right? A golden lion with a broken leg doesn't know where to survive. The strong man seemed to vaguely hear the questioning voice and asked loudly, what did you say? It's nothing, Marine is too powerful. The world recruitment hasn't even started yet, but he already has such a powerful fighting force. No more talking, I have to prepare for the recruitment assessment next month. I seem to see hope of victory. Some civilians were excited to hear the news. He immediately expressed his intention to join Marine and join the team to exterminate pirates. But some people are cautious. Don't be too optimistic. Blackbeard has completely taken over the former territory of the Whitebeard pirates and has now firmly established himself as the new four emperors. The Big Mom pirates, Beasts pirates, Red Hair pirates and Blackbeard pirates, the new four emperors pattern has been formed. If they join forces, Marine may not be able to compete. However, the other party didn't care and was still enthusiastic. I believe that the new Sakuski fleet admiral will lead Marine to completely eliminate pirates around the world. Wherever the news can reach, similar scenes are happening. It can be predicted that this recruitment will be very popular, and Marine will usher in an unprecedented period of growth in military strength. This is what Sakuski wants to see. When the people have faith and Marines have strength, the world will have hope. If Marines' military power becomes unprecedentedly powerful and there are enough Marines, then Sakuski will continue to add Marine branches around the world.
At that time, the work of Marine Branch members will be divided into administrative and military synchronized management. On the one hand, we actively crack down on criminals and maintain peace and stability. On the one hand, we carry out extensive faith education to improve people's ideological awareness. This is a huge project. It can be said that it is walking on thin ice to carry out this work under the nose of a behemoth-like world government. A little carelessness will drag Marine into an abyss. But this is the only way to liberate people all over the world. It would never be possible to accomplish this just by relying on the petty fighting of the revolutionary army led by Dorag. Just destroy the four emperors and most of the pirates. When he led a group of marines with absolute belief in justice to rise up. The faith of the whole world will gather in the center of justice in the world, Malinfando. That will be a huge source of strength for him to defeat the five elders and I am. Absolute justice will prevail. Sakaski, who is far away in the fleet admiral office of Marine's headquarters, seems to feel the gradually restored trust of people around the world in Marine and their firm belief that Marine will win. Sakaski ignored the shining tattoo on his chest, raised his head slightly, and looked out the glass door. The sun hanging high in the sky is so dazzling. Pity. The sun's rays can only warm the human body. The light of justice will warm people's hearts. If the people lose their spiritual freedom and equality, no matter how hot the sun shines, it will only shine in vain on the cold world, and people will still be cold-hearted. When the skylark on the side heard Sakaski's murmur, he also turned his gaze to the fiery red sun in the sky and nodded in understanding. Sabayati Islands. After a week-long thunder military operation by Doberman and Ghost Spider. Nowadays, pirates are almost invisible on the streets. Every now and then, a group of marine soldiers patrol the streets. Occasionally, pirates hiding in dark corners would be found, and the team leader would directly order them to be shot. The pirates were not given any chance to escape or beg for mercy. It was this ruthless attitude that made all the pirates retreat. I no longer dare to stay on the island as before. They all tried their best to coat the pirate ship and head to Fish Man Island, but little did they know that it was another hell. Unlike the pirates who fled in panic, the civilians on the island wandered the streets with confidence. All kinds of customers gathered in the shops and restaurants on the street. GR, Island Number 1, inside a hotel. Looking up, they are all a group of ordinary people. While everyone was having lunch, they discussed interesting news that had recently happened. It's still a comfortable life now. It's been a long time since I've been able to eat and go shopping with such peace of mind. One person patted his belly after eating and said with satisfaction. The people next to him began to talk animatedly. Thanks to Marine's military operation last week, there were no fresh corpses on any street at that time, and the pirates were almost wiped out. It was really dangerous last week. You could hear continuous gunshots at night. Speaking of why Marine is so tough all of a sudden, I remember that when Marine met pirates in the past, he always had the attitude of saying that it would be better to do less than to do more, and both sides would go around. Customers who didn't understand the truth were inevitably a little confused, so they asked what they thought. Anyone who knows the whole story immediately opens a Shikai response. I heard it's because the Marine base here has a new person in charge. The last person in charge died in the red-haired leg-breaking incident. The new person in charge was sent from Marine headquarters and had participated in the buster call. And the person who was explaining suddenly paused, then looked around, then lowered his voice and said. There are rumors that the new person in charge is the right-hand man of the current Marine Fleet Admiral Sakaski. Do you think this group of pirates will be able to live well? Hiss, no wonder. Sure enough, every place has its own gossip. By the way, brother, forgive me for being ignorant, but what does the red-haired broken leg have to do with the death of the previous person in charge of the base here? The brother who had just finished explaining suddenly looked at him like a mountain man, as if one was in the 2G era and the other was in the 4G era. The red-haired broken leg incident refers to the red-haired pirates raid on the marine base on the Sabayati Islands some time ago. The previous base commander, Lieutenant General Shumir, was defeated by the red-haired Shanks and died on the spot. Originally, the red-haired pirate group wanted to continue to cause trouble, but was destroyed by the Sakaski Fleet Admiral group who came to support the base. The red-haired pirate group I also had one of my legs broken. 
It seems that the niche media deliberately chose such a title in the newspaper in order to attract Boruto's attention. Otherwise, it should be called, Sabayati Island's Incident, more appropriately. But now everyone thinks that the red-haired leg was broken by Sakaski. Even Kazaru, Zefa and others who participated in the war thought so. After all, Sakaski was the only one who chased and escaped the redhead. And it is impossible for the red-haired person to explain to him every time he meets someone that his leg was actually broken by Kuzan when he was seriously injured. How embarrassing. Invisibly, Sakaski's majesty became a little heavier in everyone's hearts. Hey, hey, why is he here again? Suddenly, a voice sounded with extreme fear. Shish. Don't talk. Come here. The hotel instantly became quiet. Everyone lowered their heads silently, not daring to look out the door or window. The originally noisy streets outside were now completely quiet. Pedestrians on the roadside who had not had time to evacuate fell to their knees and did not dare to make the slightest sound. I saw a group of people slowly walking towards the end of the street, led by an extremely tall man. But the man crawled forward on his knees, wearing a black metal collar around his neck. His face and body were covered with various scars from being whipped, slashed, and burned. The empty eyes were full of numbness and despair. Riding on the man's back was a man in white with a plump face and generous lips. I saw this man with curly upward black hair and two lines of runny nose. But his eyes were dull, like an idiot. This mentally retarded man is none other than the famous world noble, St. Charles. Hey, hey, climb faster, haven't you eaten? If you keep going so slowly, you'll die. St. Charles took a whip and whipped the slave slowly crawling at his feet. While looking at the kneeling pedestrians on the roadside with lustful eyes, he seemed to be looking for his next wife. E.H., that, ah, uh, pariah in a white skirt, raise your head. Street. Charo suddenly focused on a prey, his eyes shining brightly. The woman he designated was instantly frightened to death and collapsed to the ground. The butler beside Street. Charos frowned and was about to go personally to capture the woman for his master. However, at this moment, two bullets whizzed past, one toward the housekeeper and one toward Street. Charles. In the blink of an eye, the housekeeper fell to the ground. But CP0 appeared in front of the saint of Charos and intercepted the flying bullets. Ha ha ha. Celestial dragon, take your life. You celestial dragon, I will kill you today. Two ferocious pirates jumped out of the alley, each with a gun in their hands, and rushed towards St. Charles with crazy expressions on their faces. Just when the weirdly dressed CP0 was about to take action, Ghost Spider appeared with a group of marines. I saw the Ghost Spider using his hair to control the sword and instantly killed the two pirates, and then ordered his soldiers to evacuate the crowd. Ignoring CP0's cold eyes, Ghost Spider said respectfully towards St. Charles. Lord St. Charos, we have received news that a very powerful pirate is killing people on the islands of Sabayati. In order to protect your safety, please leave this place immediately with our marine on a warship. When St. Charles heard this, he was immediately frightened. Okay, okay, take me away quickly. After saying that, he was about to leave with Ghost Spider, but as soon as he took a step, he seemed to think of something again. Then, can that woman be taken away? The lustful St. Charles still couldn't forget the woman just now. Ghost Spider couldn't help but curse in his heart, but his words were still respectful. Lord St. Charles, it's too late. Do you still want to be punched away by the pirate wearing a straw hat like before? St. Charles seemed to think of the pain at that time and couldn't help but shudder. Seeing how knowledgeable he was, the Ghost Spider couldn't help but reveal a cold smile. After taking a few steps, St. Charles turned his head again. By the way, I, my father and sister are still at the auction venue. Let's go pick them up together. The ghost spider thought that St. Charles was trying to do something different, but it turned out that he was giving away his head. The auction venue is also located on island number one, which is a centralized place for slave trading. The targets of trafficking are criminals and people from countries that have not joined the world government. St. Charles, his father St. Rosewald, and his sister Cherulia Palace, this family of three likes to take care of this auction house very much. But after today, it will cease to exist. No problem. Lord St. Charles, your family must be neat and tidy, right? 
St. Charles sucked the snot from his nose that was about to drip, and said with a stupid smile. Yes. This marine, you are quite a nice person. Sabayati Islands GR Island No. 1, Human Auction Venue. Although human trafficking has been banned worldwide. But this human auction house, authorized and managed by the Draco, seems to have the tacit approval of the world government. And it claims to be a, career referral center. The operator behind it is Don Quixote da Flamingo, one of the, seven warlords of the sea. But after Luffy attacked the Celestial Dragons, Da Flamingo gave it to his subordinate Disco. He also claimed that human trafficking has become outdated and can no longer be tolerated in the new era. He is truly a man with a, strong military strategy. Disco is a man wearing a tall hat and star-shaped sunglasses. At this time, he was looking at Ghost Spider and the three noble Celestial Dragons in front of him with a flattering expression. My lords, everything has been cleaned up. I guarantee there will be no undercover pirates here. The auction venue was empty, and everyone was driven away by Disco under the orders of Ghost Spider. The Ghost Spider looked at the sealed environment around him and nodded with satisfaction. That's it. Thank you for your hard work, then, please go die. Disco didn't react yet, but he was flattered after hearing the first half of the sentence. Master Marine, it's not hard. Wait, wait. By the time he reacted, he had no chance to speak. The ghost spider's sword plunged hard into his heart. Disco fell to the ground with eyes wide open and a look of reluctance on his face, and died instantly. The Tianlong man next to him didn't think it was a big deal if someone died, but he was just a little confused. Marine, why did you kill this pariah? The ghost spider turned to look at Saint Roswader who was speaking. There was no longer a respectful look on his face, and his tone was cold. Of course let him go to hell for you first. As soon as he finished speaking, the ghost spider slashed at St. Roswader's head with another sword. This sword is so simple and unpretentious, but it has extremely important historical significance. It represents Marine's first challenge to the draconian regime. It symbolizes Marine taking a firm step on the road of resistance. Under the deliberate control of force, St. Roswader's hood broke open on the spot, and bright red blood began to flow from his forehead. Ah! The three Tianlong people suddenly screamed. Marine, what are you doing? Are you crazy? Only then did the two CP zeros guarding the side react and quickly stood up to stop the ghost spider. Nothing done, just killing the pig. Ghost spider said nonchalantly. At the same time, he wiped the sword stained with the blood from St. Roswader's head on the clothes of Disco's corpse on the ground. You. Have you betrayed Marine? How dare you assassinate Lord Celestial Dragon? One of the CP zeros shouted sharply. At the same time, his body couldn't stop trembling. Now that the Tianlong people are injured, their CP zero, who is responsible for protecting the Tianlong people, will also receive the most severe punishment. That would be a torture worse than life. It would be strange if he wasn't afraid. Just when CP zero was about to capture the ghost spider, a voice came from the door. What's going on? Why is Master Tianlong injured? It turned out that Doberman came with someone. The crying Draco and CP0 looked at the Lieutenant General rank on Doberman's shoulders and instantly felt hope. Hey, Marine, there is a Marine here who has rebelled and dared to assassinate Lord Tianlong. Please help us subdue him. A CP0 shouted excitedly. Doberman pretended to be confused and walked forward and came to the two CP0s. Oh. Is there such a thing? Let me see who is so bold. CP0 was about to answer when he suddenly felt a pain in his chest. Looking down, he saw a long sword piercing from his back to his chest. He just wanted to raise his head to see the owner of the long sword, but was stabbed in the abdomen by a ghost spider in front of him. Suddenly, the CP0's eyes dimmed. You, the other CP0 looked in disbelief. How dare two lieutenant generals do this? Doberman nodded to the ghost spider, and the two of them moved their feet and simultaneously attacked the remaining CP0. Sakaski Fleet Admiral, successfully completed the mission. Doberman stepped on St. Roswald's head and dialed Sakaski's number. Sakaski from Marine Headquarters smiled slightly when he heard this and said immediately. Let the ghost spider continue to guard the islands of Sabayati and declare that the celestial dragons were kidnapped by the big pirate. Now you take the Celestial Dragons to Amazon Lily in the Windless Zone. I will set off immediately. 
After giving the instructions, Sakuski immediately hung up the phone, and then explained to Skylark. Habari, I'm going to go out now and call out Fawn Clay from the dark room. If the five elders call, send Kazaru out. Also, call and tell the pirate empress that Marine has something to do today and needs to summon her, and ask her to come out of the island to meet her. After Sakuski finished explaining, he covered it up a little and immediately rushed out the door. All the way to the recruit training camp, Zephyr's office. Sakuski didn't knock, just pushed the door open and walked in. Only Zephyr was seen inside. Zephyr, who was reviewing the materials, heard the news of gate of opening, thought it was some ignorant recruit, and wanted to reprimand him. Unexpectedly, when he looked up, he saw Sakuski's expression that was half smiling but not smiling. Teacher Zephyr, you are fine. Zephyr put away the materials in his hand and asked with a puzzled look on his face, Sakuski, why are you here free? Teacher Zephyr, ask Enel to come over and take you to an interesting place. In the backyard of Sakuski's home. Zephyr looked at the Ark's motto parked on the ground in amazement. Can this ship really fly? Next to him, Enel suddenly spoke up. Old man, don't underestimate this spaceship. It took me many years to build it. After a period of training, the muscles on Enel's body became obviously much stronger. The overall momentum is also more intimidating. And because I read through the book Sakuski gave me, the belief in my eyes became even stronger. Boy, how are you talking? Zephyr instantly raised his right fist and quickly hit Enel on the head. But this sudden punch was narrowly dodged by Enel. Seeing Enel's triumphant expression, although Zephyr looked angry on the surface, his eyes were full of smiles. Sakuski saw from the side that Zephyr could use his right hand proficiently, and Enel's reaction ability had also been greatly improved, and he couldn't help but nodded with satisfaction. Okay. Let's go quickly. Enel, go start the spacecraft and move forward at full speed in the direction of the compass I gave you. After hearing this, the two stopped fighting, but Zephyr still asked more questions. Sakuski, where are we going? Amazon Lily. When the three people boarded the ship, the Ark's motto disappeared over Marinavando in an instant. Towards evening, Ark Proverbs finally flew into the windless sea area. To say that electric-driven spaceships are convenient. No sea breeze is needed to move the sails. So it is still clear in the calm zone. Soon, Sakuski discovered the large warship moving slowly below. Enel was immediately ordered to dock the spacecraft above the warship immediately. Sakuski Fleet Admiral. Doberman saw the three people getting off the spacecraft and immediately stepped forward to salute. Teacher Zephyr. I didn't expect you to come and watch the fun. Doberman was a little surprised when he saw Zephyr coming with Sakuski. I thought that Zephyr, who was once known for his, no killing, also wanted to see the miserable situation of the Tianlong people for excitement. But Zephyr didn't know that these people were so bold, so he looked confused. You kid, why are you watching the excitement? Sakuski called me over to say that we have something important to discuss. Sakuski did not explain much to Zephyr, but directly asked Doberman, where are the people? Doberman quickly walked to the front to lead the way. Everyone walked all the way to the temporary prison at the bottom of the cabin. During this period, Zephyr was still asking, who? And, what to do? Apparently not aware of the seriousness of the problem. Enel, on the other hand, looked indifferent, put his hands behind his head, and looked around. When they reached the door of the prison room, everyone could vaguely see the three people lying inside. They all looked bloody, and they were groaning on the ground. Doberman looked inside and asked the soldiers guarding the side. Why did you suddenly become such a bear? The tall and powerful soldier saluted, and then immediately responded. Report to Lieutenant General. They had been shouting just now. I was afraid of disturbing everyone, so I went in and beat them up. Now they have calmed down. He is worthy of being a soldier trained under Sakuski. He got used to beating the celestial dragons in a short time. Zephyr thought it was a pirate captured by Marine, so he glanced at it casually and turned around. But the figures inside seemed familiar, so I took a closer look. Suddenly, Zephyr's eyes widened suddenly. He took a few steps forward in disbelief, his body almost touching the iron door. Zephyr was seen holding the iron bars of the cage with both hands. It seemed that he was using this to support his body that was about to collapse. 
Sure enough, as I get older, I can't accept too much stimulation. Zepha opened and closed his eyes, then closed them and opened them again. Finally, he opened his slightly trembling lips and couldn't help but uttered a curse word. Isn't this a celestial dragon? After a while, after Sakaski's explanation, Zepha finally accepted the facts before him. Sakaski, your plan is too fast. My heart can hardly bear it. Teacher Zepha. Don't delay things, otherwise things will change. Sakaski now wants to create as much chaos within the world government as possible. But the draconian incident before us was not enough. I hope the revolutionary army will make more noise. By the way, Doberman, why are there three celestial dragons? Sakaski once again glanced at the three people in the cage who were not completely awake yet. I heard from Ghost Spider that it seemed that St. Charles wanted his family to be reunited and go on the road together. So he fulfilled his wish. Doberman recalled what Ghost Spider said and responded uncertainly. Is there such a strange request? Boss, is this the descendant of the creator? It looks like rubbish. Enel didn't think it was a big deal, but stared at the celestial dragon in the cage with great interest. Suddenly, Enel's eyes rolled. He glanced at Sakaski, Zepha and others who were discussing important matters. Then he quietly walked to the cage. He picked up the golden rod in his hand and stretched it through the gap in the iron bars. Then he poked St. Charlo's directly five inches below his belly button, who was groaning the loudest. A powerful, sparkling electric current flashed from the stick. Ah! I! My! A tragic pig cry came, breaking the quiet atmosphere. Sakaski and Zepha heard the noise and looked towards the cage. St. Charles was seen rolling on the ground holding his lower body. Enel stood nearby with an innocent look on his face. St. Roswader was also awakened by his son's screams. Seeing his miserable condition, he couldn't help shouting at Enel outside the door. Untouchable, you dare to attack the celestial dragons. Do you know what it will cost to attack me? Aren't you afraid of General Marine? Enel was completely unafraid and picked his ears as if nothing had happened. Boss, he said General Marine. Sakaski sneered when he heard this, and went directly to order the soldiers to open the cell door. He walked in grandly, then squatted in front of St. Roswader, looking at his bloody Madara Madara pig face. The dim light made St. Roswalder unable to see Sakaski's face clearly, so he continued to shout. You, do you know how powerful General Marine is? They are all dogs raised by us Tianlong people. I advise you to let us go as soon as possible. Sakaski's eyes instantly became extremely cold. The temperature in the cage rose sharply. Look, look, who am I? Sakaski held St. Roswader by his collar with one hand and pulled him in front of him, while the other hand kept patting his face. Slap him hard in the face every time he says a word. In the blink of an eye, St. Roswader had completely turned into a pig's head. He opened his swollen eyes and narrowed his eyes to barely see the outline of Sakaski's face. But he still didn't recognize who the person in front of him was. No, no matter who you are, if you beat the celestial dragon, just wait for the general to chase you. Sakaski frowned dissatisfied and looked up and down at St. Roswader. Then he showed a cruel and bloodthirsty sneer and punched his left leg hard. The high temperature magma, under Sakaski's control, instantly severed St. Roswader's left leg. Ah! Feeling the severe pain, St. Roswold suddenly opened his narrowed eyes, and then he could see Sakaski's face completely. You! Dot you, Sakaski! St. Roswader no longer cared about the pain in his legs, cold sweat kept breaking out, and his whole body began to tremble. Marine! Fleet Admiral, how is this possible? Before he finished speaking, he fainted. Sakaski shook his head in disappointment and threw him to the ground as if throwing away garbage. Then he patted the dust on his clothes and stood up. Everyone watched Sakaski frighten the Tianlong people to death, and they couldn't help but sigh inwardly. Well done. But Sakaski, as if nothing was wrong, asked Doberman expressionlessly. Did you record the scene just now with a phone? Under a ray of sunset, the warship continued sailing in the direction of Amazon Lily without hesitation. Before the sun set, everyone finally saw the Nine Snakes pirates in the waters outside Amazon Lily Island. The Kuja pirates belonged to the daughter country on the Amazon Lily Island. Led by the emperor of the daughter country, the most beautiful woman in the world, the pirate empress Boya Hancock. 
The flag of the Kuja pirates is a skull surrounded by nine snakes shaped like the sun, and all members are composed of women. In front of the pirate ship are two huge, sea snakes. The large ship dragged by them can freely enter and exit the, windless zone. Marine. Don't come any closer. I heard the warning from the Kuja pirate ship in the distance. However, the people on the warship seemed to ignore the warning and continued to move forward through the waves. As an absolutely righteous camp in Marine, how could he be scared away by pirates? Besides, the people on this warship are not simple. Sakaski, Zepha, Doberman and Enel, four people leading hundreds of soldiers can completely attack the four emperor's regiment. Just the Nine Snakes pirates, why? On the Nine Snakes pirate ship, the two sisters Poya Sundasonia and Poya Marigold frowned. Looking at the warship that was not slowing down at all, he couldn't help but ask for advice from Boya Hancock, who was sitting on his pet snake Salome in the back. Sister, Marine did not listen to the warning and continued to approach us. Do you want to attack? How dare you be so rude? A clear and charming voice sounded. The other female pirates on the ship immediately had loving eyes in their eyes. The tall woman stepped off her pet snake. She has long black hair, styled in a G hairstyle, and wears a pair of snake-shaped earrings. Dark blue eyes stared at the warship approaching quickly in the distance. Marine. Hancock had a look of disgust in his eyes. The abominable Marine actually killed Luffy's brother and captured Luffy into him fell down. Fortunately, he was rescued by the red hair in the end, otherwise he would have suffered so much. Hancock's eyes flashed with distress. So Marines, crime, cannot be forgiven. I saw her quickly walking to the bow of the ship. Touch your lips lightly with your fingers, and a huge peach-colored heart-shaped substance will appear. Then draw it back like a bow and arrow. Captive arrow. In an instant, hundreds of pink arrows came towards the warship. Without saying a word, Hancock immediately launched an intensive offensive. Sakaski on the warship looked at the dense arrows flying in the air and snorted coldly. This woman has really not changed at all, she is arrogant, narcissistic and willful. Enel, go deal with her. Sakaski did not take action himself. As a fleet admiral, I can't do everything myself. Since there are ready-made thugs around you, you must make good use of them. Enel looked at the curtain-like arrow shadow in front of him and nodded casually. It seemed that he looked down upon the woman across from him. I saw him lift up the golden stick and wave it forward gently. Thunderbird. Hundreds of giant birds composed of thunder and lightning appeared in the sky instantly. Only hearing a sharp neigh, they immediately rushed towards the other party's pirate ship. The powerful thunder and lightning power shattered thousands of arrows. Then the offensive continued unabated and continued to shoot towards the Nine Snakes pirate ship. The speed of lightning is so fast that it catches people off guard. In the blink of an eye, violent thunder and lightning descended on the pirate ship. The female pirates on the pirate ship seem to have no good way to deal with it, so they can only avoid it in a hurry. Even Hancock and her two sisters couldn't figure out why there was a lightning attack on the marine warship. Boom. Tens of millions of bolts of lightning exploded completely, and screams continued to be heard from the pirate ship. The two sea snakes roared in pain and kept swinging from side to side, causing the pirate ship to shake violently on the sea. When the smoke dissipated, all that was seen was an extremely miserable scene. The original red hue of the Kuja pirate ship has now turned pitch black. The hull was even more dilapidated at this time, as if it would fall apart in the next second. A large number of scantily clad female pirates were lying on the deck. Some even had the few remaining clothes on their bodies burnt, showing their utter disgrace. The only three sisters still standing were Hancock, Sandisonia, and Marigold. As well as several more powerful cadre members such as Gentian and Cosmos. Although they were not seriously injured, their current appearance was very bad. The originally snow-white and tender skin had turned dark, as if covered with a layer of armed domineering aura. The clothes were also burnt and in tatters. The hair is even more like a sea serpent's head with fangs and claws. For the beauty-loving Hancock, this would undoubtedly kill her. Unforgivable. Let me die for you. Hancock looked around, his eyes rested on the burnt pet snake, and he immediately shouted angrily. She took a sharp step forward. His eyes stared angrily at the warship that was already a hundred meters away. An invisible momentum burst out from her body. 
A vague white wave of air rushed towards the warship. Fish and shrimps with white eyes gradually appeared on the sea surface. But before this invincible force could reach the warship, it was dispersed by a more powerful and domineering terrifying force. Conqueror's domineering collision. Hancock felt the suffocating domineering power in front of him, and finally no longer raised his nostrils to the sky. Finally, I saw Sakaski standing on the warship with my eyes. Her eyes instantly became serious. Even if they can't figure it out clearly, everyone knows that Sakaski is a man who is not easy to mess with. This woman actually has conqueror's domineering power. Enel on the warship looked surprised. But this domineering force is too weak compared to his boss and the red-haired cripple. Speaking of which, I feel that the boss is more domineering than before. Just standing next to him makes me feel scared. Sakaski glanced at Hancock, who was facing a formidable enemy, and said to Enel nonchalantly. Don't underestimate the enemy, this woman is more powerful than the little fat guy you dealt with on the Sabayati Islands before. Enel nodded with a slightly serious expression. Then it turned into thunder and lightning and roared away in the direction of Hancock. Doberman, let someone bring out those three celestial dragons. Also, bring out two fishing rods. Seeing that Enel on the other side was able to deal with Hancock for the time being, Sakaski stopped paying attention and just regarded it as training. Untouchables, how dare you do this to me, Marine, prepare to be completely eliminated by the world government. When the Tianlong people were escorted up, Sakaski ignored the clamoring Shalulia Palace. Immediately, he ordered the soldiers to tie up St. Roswader, who had a broken leg, and throw him to the bow of the ship. Then he took a fishing rod handed over by the soldier and asked Zepha with great interest. Teacher Zepha, are you interested in a fishing competition? Oh, could it be? Zepha had heard a long time ago that Sakaski and his men liked to hang some vicious pirates as bait on the sea. I didn't expect to have the opportunity to meet you today. In the past, Zepha must have been very opposed to this kind of killing game, but now. Glancing at the two heavenly dragons lying on the ground, Zepha couldn't help but feel a little itchy. Hey, what are you untouchables doing? Shalulia Palace, the only one who was awake, saw everyone's malicious expressions and screamed in horror. Ha ha, you will know later. Sakaski glanced at St. Charles, who was still unconscious, and frowned slightly. Then he waved the hard iron fishing rod in his hand and hit St. Charles hard. Ah, which, what fool, street. Charles was awakened by the pain in an instant. Only then did Sakaski and Zepha tie the two of them to the top of the fishing rod. Stunned bait is no fun. How could you attract such a ferocious sea beast without shouting? The two fishermen carried huge baits to the side of the boat and found a suitable place to sit down. Teacher Zepha, be careful not to let them be eaten by the fish later. Let the fish in the sea slowly bite their flesh. Whoever has the Draco on the fishing rod attracts the most fish will win. After listening to Sakaski's explanation, Zepha nodded clearly. This requires anglers to accurately control the degree to which the bait is bitten. Prevent the bait from being eaten away with little fat left. As a result, there will be no fish to eat later. The two of them flicked the fishing rod casually. With screams and curses, the celestial dragon suddenly became a delicious dinner for the fish in the sea. Games start. Doberman and some soldiers also came to join in the fun. The marines couldn't help but cheered as they watched Sakaski and Zepha control the fishing rods to swing left and right above the tusks of many sea beasts. The joyful laughter on the warship the frightened howls in midair, the hungry roars on the sea. Together they form a harmonious picture. Human beings' joys and sorrows are not the same, right? Seeing the sky getting darker and darker. The two equally matched fishermen finally took back their fishing rods. But at this time, there were only two bloody humanoid skeletons left on the fishing rod. Only some shredded meat remains on the skeleton. In the eyes of nature, there are no so-called nobles and commoners. Isn't it always the case that all living things are equal? Doberman, is it recorded? Sakaski asked again as in the cell. After receiving a positive answer, Sakaski mercilessly burned the two skeletons with magma. The ashes fell to the vast sea with Sakaski's fist, causing many marines to cheer in their hearts. Sakaski moved his wrist slightly and immediately turned his attention to Enel and Hancock who were fighting against each other. I saw that Hancock at this time still looked like the most beautiful woman in the world. 
His whole body was covered with traces of being scorched by electric current, as if he had just crawled out of coals. Seeing that it might take some time for Enel to take down Hancock, Sakaski didn't have the time to wait any longer. Sakaski's feet flashed, and Moonwalk flew into the air. In an instant, he arrived in front of Hancock. With lightning speed, the right fist filled with high-temperature magma was swung forward fiercely. Hancock looked at the figure that suddenly appeared in front of him, and suddenly felt a sense of death and a deadly threat. She had no time to dodge, so she could only cross her hands in front of her chest. At the same time, he protected his upper body with armed domineering force and tried his best to resist head-on. But he was still punched away by Sakaski. Before anyone could realize what was going on, they saw Hancock crash into the cabin behind him instantly. With a bang, the cabin of the ship couldn't bear the violent impact and collapsed immediately. Sister. Lord Snake Princess. Sandisonia, Marigold, and the other surviving female pirates suddenly screamed in surprise. He wanted to step forward, but was easily blocked by Enel. Cough. Cough. A moment later, Hancock staggered out of the pile of rubble. There was a big hole in the Chongsam in front of him, and his entire abdomen was a bloody mess. Hancock looked at Sakaski, who looked indifferent, and was about to say something harsh. Puff. Suddenly, a mouthful of hot blood spurted out from Hancock's mouth. Except for the members of the Kuja pirates who looked worried. No one present felt unbearable, including Zepha, who was once known as a benevolent general. Sakaski looked at the pale-faced pirate empress, without a trace of emotion in his heart, and his face remained expressionless. Hancock. Recognize your position. Marine didn't call you here to show off your power. Hancock raised his head stubbornly, his eyes filled with coldness, and he gritted his teeth and shouted. Akainu. I will never give in. Stubborn. Sakaski snorted coldly, and immediately walked up to the crumbling Hancock. Looking down at the figure who was more than one meter shorter than himself, he easily blocked Hancock's kick that was about to resist. Then he kicked her mercilessly and knocked her to the ground. Sakaski looked at Hancock who was still struggling on the ground, with an imperceptible sneer on his face. He leaned slightly and whispered in Hancock's ear, you don't want the pattern behind your back to be known to your citizens, do you? Hancock on the ground suddenly opened his eyes when he heard this, and his body began to tremble uncontrollably. You. Dot you, how could you? Hancock's tone was full of panic and despair. The memory that had been sealed for a long time exploded in her brain instantly, like Sakaski's lava, and it was so hot that it hurt her. The experience of being imprisoned and abused by the Tianlong people was a pain that she would never forget in her life. It was a pain that penetrated deep into the bone marrow and engraved into the soul. Looking at Hancock's dull face, Sakaski had no sympathy at all. He coldly stretched out his steely right hand and grabbed her neck fiercely. Then he lifted her up into the air in an instant. Ignoring the shouts of other people on the pirate ship, he flew to the warship in the blink of an eye. Sakaski casually threw Hancock to Roswader Saint's side, and then slapped her out of her stupor. To deal with unreasonable pirates, you can only use force instead of words. Hancock, with his hair disheveled, was about to have a seizure when he suddenly saw Saint Roswader lying next to him. His originally angry eyes instantly turned into panic, and he quickly kicked the deck under his feet. He rolled and crawled back more than 10 meters until he stopped at the edge of the warship. Why, are you scared now? Sakaski's sneer came, which brought Hancock back to his mind a little. God. Dragon people. Why are you here? Hancock had ignored his embarrassed appearance at this time and murmured slightly absentmindedly. Give you some time to calm down. After Sakaski said that, he walked to Zephyr regardless and saw the confused eyes of everyone. Sakaski then explained just a pirate who was persecuted by the Tianlong people. Teacher Zepha, I asked you to come here this time to turn Amazon Lily and surrounding islands into our marine training camp base. Then Sakaski explained to Zepha in detail the fighting nation on the Amazon Lily Island, the Nine Snakes, and how they could quickly master the armed hockey. And there are many suitable islands around the island that can be used for cultivation. Especially the uninhabited island, Ruskana, northwest of Amazon Lily Island. There are 48 seasons a year there, and there are hordes of wild beasts, making the living conditions extremely challenging. 
Luffy can master three-color hockey in two years there, and potential soldiers in the Marines can also try it. Are you saying that we can train our own soldiers here? Zepha touched his chin and thought. That's right, and we can also recruit the Nine Snakes, which is a powerful military force. Sakaski continued to add. The Amazon Lily Island is inhabited by the Nine Snakes, a fighting nation composed entirely of women. Its characteristic is that it has a snake wrapped around its body and has the ability to transform into a weapon at will. They are born as warriors and are trained as soldiers. Almost all the people are soldiers and have relatively strong combat capabilities. This pirate country is similar to the flower country. It is also a good choice to take it under its command and act as cannon fodder when necessary. For example, let the Nine Snakes pirates specifically find trouble with the celestial dragons wandering in the sea to divert the attention of the world government. Perhaps in the future, Hancock can be ordered to lead this group of female pirates to the Sabayati Islands to guard the celestial dragons who came down from Mary Joa. Hancock. Are you awake? After Sakaski and Zephyr discussed it, Hancock looked at the bow of the ship and glared at St. Roswald and shouted sharply. Akainu. What do you Marines want to do? Hancock's face looked complicated at this time. This man, who is the second person besides Luffy to know his secret, dared to abuse the celestial dragons like this. This is much more serious than Luffy fighting the flying dragon man alone. Hancock's mentality couldn't help but undergo a 180 degree change. Can't you see? Of course I'm helping you kill your enemy. I can allow you to take this celestial dragon to your ship, then wake up all your crew members who are still alive, and ask them to kill this pig with you. Sakaski followed suit, and his demonic and bewitching whispers gently sounded in Hancock's ears. Wah, what, why? Hancock looked at Sakaski with blank eyes. My mind became confused again. Stop talking nonsense. Just do what you think in your heart. Otherwise, your sister and the crew will all die. Sakaski pointed at the two Boya sisters who were beaten down by Enel and said unceremoniously. Hancock was filled with a mixture of anger, fear, doubt and hesitation. He picked up the unconscious Tianlong and returned to the pirate ship. He ordered the two Boya sisters, who also looked frightened, to call up the entire crew and prepare to cut the body of St. Roswader together. Your secret must never be known to more people. Tianlong people, let me die. Hancock was like a maniac and kept stamping on St. Roswader with the soles of his high heels. During this period, Sakaski made a gesture to Enel above the pirate ship. Enel instantly took out the video phone bug and completely recorded the brutal murder process. After all the broken corpses were thrown into the sea, Hancock fell limply to the ground. Sometimes I cry in pain, and sometimes I smile. After a while, Hancock wiped away his tears and stood up again. Looking at the bright moon on the sea, I was stunned and speechless for a long time. Silence is the best way to tell. She had never felt so good. Even when he first learned that Luffy had beaten the celestial dragon, he was only excited for a while. But now my mind seems to be liberated. The darkness suppressed in the deepest part of my heart seems to be getting light. The pain that penetrates deep into the bone marrow, the only way to escape is through violence. Now that you've taken revenge, it's time to talk about what your daughter's country should pay for in the future, right? At some point, Sakaski appeared next to Hancock again, forcibly waking her up from silence. Why is the daughter kingdom involved? I can be willing to obey Marine's orders. Hancock no longer has any burdens and worries at this time. Even the thought of Luffy, who had been obsessed with him before, gradually faded away. Even if Marine asks her to fight four emperors now, she feels it doesn't matter. Without her, Granny Nu and her two younger sisters can continue to manage the daughter kingdom. This is a scene that Sakaski is happy to see, but he wants more than that. Oh, you think too highly of yourself. Look at the sky first. Hancock looked up into the air in confusion. I only saw Enel dragging a curtain, and a wonderful video was being shown on it. The scene ends with the crew members of the Nine Snakes pirates dumping their bodies. You. Hancock was shocked and angry, but there was nothing he could do. Now the entire Nine Snakes clan is inseparable from the death of the Tianlong people. Even if the Nine Snakes pirates are handed over to the world government, they won't be able to get away with it so easily. There is an unofficial agreement here. 
If you give it to your previous emperors, Groliosa, she will understand what to do. Sakaski took out a pamphlet from his pocket and handed it to Hancock. Groliosa is the former emperor of the daughter kingdom, and currently plays a role similar to the, national advisor. Possessing the wisdom, strategy and foresight of previous rulers, he has the foresight to major events. Even though he is old, his skills are still strong and he still has the physique of a nine snakes warrior. In the original play, Luffy could be subdued while running with one move, and he was still as stable as a rock even if he was thrown off the window sill by Hancock. Stop using Shichibukai's phone bug. In addition, tomorrow you will renounce the title of Seven Warlords of the Sea. The Nine Snakes pirates are prohibited from looting in the future, and must regularly eliminate a certain number of pirates. The specific content is stated in the agreement. Black Arm Zephyr will coordinate with you later. Sakaski took out a new phone bug and handed it to Hancock. Seeing Hancock take the phone bug with his charred hands, Sakaski suddenly felt as if he was going to become a wholesaler of phone bugs, and he would probably have to pay a lot in the future. After listening to Sakaski's general arrangement, Hancock knew that the matter was big, no matter how big-hearted or brainless he was. This is not something that I can arrange and solve myself. I have to go back and ask Granny Niu for help. Sakaski looked at Hancock with a gloomy expression and sneered inwardly. I have recruited another desperate thug. From now on, whether it is dealing with the four emperors or the world government, please rush to the front for me. Sakaski, is the deal settled? Zepha couldn't help but ask as he looked at the nine snakes pirates retreating away. After all, those nine snakes will help him train his recruits in the future, so it would be better to know more about them. Everything is under control. Teacher Zepha, go check out the desert islands around you. You will definitely be interested. After Sakaski finished solving the matters at hand, he invited Zepha to Ruskana Island. Ruskana Island is very close to Nine Snake Island, but it will be there in a moment. Zepha expressed great satisfaction after seeing the island and immediately decided to let Enel practice here for a period of time. Sakaski also used his knowledge and experience to gain a general understanding of this island, which is indeed very suitable for practice. It's a pity that Luffy is not on this island like in the original novel. By the way, without Rayleigh, which famous teacher will teach him? When Sakaski returned to Malinfando, he just walked into his study. Sure enough, I received another call from five elders. It's late at night, don't these old guys need to sleep? Sakaski, have you found the whereabouts of the Draco? Five elders, who had a birthmark on his forehead, asked with a slightly anxious tone. It can be seen that the five elders were also put under pressure by other celestial dragons. After all, three celestial dragons were kidnapped at once, which was a very scary thing for those world nobles. Can we still have fun outside from now on? Master five elders, Marine is already pursuing us with all our strength. According to reports from the Marines of the Sabayati Islands, the big pirate escaped while Straw Hat Luffy was causing trouble in Impel Castle. He came out and found that his former hometown was destroyed by the celestial dragons while he was serving his sentence, so he has been waiting on the Sabayati Islands waiting for an opportunity to strike. It's probably going to be very bad now. Sakaski opened his eyes and told lies, and even responded with a gloating tone. Sakaski, stop talking sarcastically. Presumptuous. Several five elders immediately shouted loudly. Even if they knew that Marine had long been dissatisfied with the actions of the Celestial Dragons, they could only keep it in their hearts. Marine is just a hound raised by the Celestial Dragons, who has the right to bark at his master. The Celestial Dragons were kidnapped, and you Marines have an unshirkable responsibility. Continue to increase my troops to pursue me. If you want to see the person alive, you will see the corpse if you die. Hearing the unquestionable words of five elders, Sakaski couldn't help but sneer in his heart. How could there still be corpses to be seen? Try your best, Sakaski said before decisively hanging up the phone on five elders. Then he stood up and walked to the bookshelf, taking out a military and political book that he had read in memory. I returned to my seat and started reading from the beginning under the dim light. It's filled with Sakaski's recent annotations. It begins with a very brief, yet extremely eye-catching sentence. War is the continuation of politics. Further detailed notes are provided in the spaces below. War is like a chameleon, ever-changing and different. 
but the violence, probability and contingency of war are one of its fundamental attributes. From the perspective of the relationship between war and politics, politics is the matrix of war, and war is the tool of politics. Until the night gets cooler and the sky turns slightly white. Sakaski slowly closed the book and walked to the bed next to him to rest for a while. A wise man always remains vigilant. Since we are in this morbid and absurd world, we must always avoid being bound by stupid thinking. Knowledge is also a sharp weapon, it can often kill people invisibly. In the next few days, the incident of the abduction of the celestial dragons on the islands of Sabayati began to unfold. No one could have imagined that someone would dare to kidnap a celestial dragon in broad daylight. Before, Straw Hat Luffy punched a celestial dragon and it was already a matter of breaking the sky. Everyone in the world knows the majesty of the celestial dragons, they are truly sacred and inviolable. They are the descendants of the creator of the world and the favorites of God. If you dare to take action against them, or even disrespect them a little, you are tantamount to provoking the world government, which will lead to disaster. In addition to being wanted with a huge bounty, you will also be hunted by General Marine. As a result, there were still people who braved the disdain of the world and brazenly attacked the Tianlong people. And there are three celestial dragons. Everyone is wondering which big pirate has such courage. At the same time, the world government has sent a large number of CP personnel to search for traces of the celestial dragons on the sea these days. The marine headquarters and various branches also dispatched hundreds of warships, and the momentum was extremely powerful. But those who were interested discovered that Marine did not seem to pay much attention to the search, but instead focused on cleaning up the pirates wandering around. Obviously the intelligence is talking about big pirates, but don't talk about tens of millions or millions of small pirates. Even the pirates who had just hoisted the pirate flag and had not yet received a bounty were mercilessly hunted by Marine. Of course, this was planned by Sakaski. With this chaos, we can harvest the garbage on the sea like crazy. As for finding celestial dragons. No kidding, I'd be fooled if I could find it. However, Sakaski symbolically sent the top combat-powered General Kazaru to patrol the Grand Route. As a result, before getting off work every day, Kazaru would come to the Fleet Admiral office to complain about the hard work of the day. Bang. 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 A familiar knock on the door sounded, and Sakaski knew it was Kazaru coming again without looking up. Ouch, Sakaski, my old bones can't stand running like this every day. Oh. Miss Skylark is still here. As soon as Kazaru entered the door, he said hello to Sakaski and Hibari, then he found a sofa to sit on and began to complain with a pout. As an old guy who was born in North Blue like Sakaski and joined Marine at the same time. Kazaru and Sakaski are very familiar with each other, and there is no need to be as polite as when facing Sengoku. It's just that their ideas are not the same. Kazaru thinks Sakaski is too rigid, while Sakaski thinks Kazaru, like Aokiji, is too lazy. But the relationship between Kazaru and Sakaski is much better than the previous relationship between Aokiji and Sakaski. Monkey, you don't need to search so hard, you can just wander around in the sea twice. Sakaski glanced at Kazaru and leaned back. He casually took out a cigar from his pocket, lit it with lava, and started smoking happily. Seeing Sakaski smoking a cigar in the office, Kazaru was not to be outdone. He immediately took out a cigarette from his trouser pocket and lit it with the laser. Sakaski, this is not something you can say. Kazaru blew out a puff of smoke heavily, as if he wanted to spit out all the fatigue of the day through the smoke, and then looked at Sakaski with a puzzled face. Although I know that Sakaski, an iron-blooded soldier who insists on absolute justice, naturally can't stand the style of the Tianlong people, and wishes that they would die outside soon. But he is also a soldier who resolutely obeys orders. How could it be such a blatant expression of indifference? He always felt that Sakaski had changed a lot since he became fleet admiral. First of all, in terms of strength, Sakaski's strength seemed to have been greatly enhanced unknowingly. Now I can feel the majestic power sitting next to him. Even though Sakaski didn't show it deliberately, the huge energy of his physical strength seemed to be overflowing. It is simply more exaggerated than when he faced the white beard at his peak in middle age. I haven't seen Sakaski go to practice anywhere. You can't fight with white beard, Aokiji, Rayleigh and red hair, and you will automatically become powerful. 
But that's not right either. Except for Aokiji, I have also fought against several others, but there is no such thing as, a great teacher makes a great apprentice. And that extremely domineering conqueror's domineering spirit. I have never heard of it before, and I have never seen Sakuski have such a thing. But as soon as it is shown that it can directly compete with the owner of the most powerful conqueror's domineering, red-haired shanks, isn't this ridiculous? At that time, Kazaru's jaw was almost shocked. We have been classmates for decades, but we didn't know that our comrades were overlords. So Sakuski has been hiding his strength before. After you were promoted to fleet admiral, did you no longer have any scruples and could you show your true self without any scruples? The more Kazaru thought about it, the more he felt it was possible. What a guy with big eyebrows and big eyes, you pretend to be more serious than anyone else, but in the end you can act better than me. Secondly, Kazaru felt that Sakuski seemed less rigid and stubborn. In the past, Sakuski was stubborn and had a very fiery temper. Whoever was angry with him would suffer. Now, although he is still so serious and serious, so ruthless. But he seems to be less stubborn and irritable, and more sensible and steady. Sure enough, will a promotion or a change in power completely change a person? Kazaru was glad that he did not run for fleet admiral, otherwise he would not be like himself. If that's the case, how can I clock in and clock in from 9 to 5 in the future? It's scary to think about it. Sakuski had no idea that Kazaru had thought about so many things in such a short period of time. While he was puffing away the smoke, he said to the thoughtful Kazaru Yu Yu, Monkey, it's impossible for you to find the celestial dragon. After hearing Sakuski's words, Kazaru took another deep drag on his cigarette. Then you still send me to search at sea. Wait, wait, it's impossible to find it. You mean. Kazaru seemed to have grasped an important detail and looked at Sakuski with confusion and shock. Sakuski paused slightly when he heard Kazaru's question. Then he put out the cigar in his hand and motioned to Skylark next to him to close the office door. Under Kazaru's confused gaze, Sakuski moved the seat under him forward. At the same time, he crossed his hands on the desk and leaned forward slightly, as if he wanted the other party to hear what he said more clearly. I saw Sakuski's lips moving slightly and slowly spitting out a few words. Because. Heaven. Dragon. Man. I. Kill. Thanks for watching, please subscribe and support our channel.